to Talking Bollocks. We're back. Yes, it's the June edition. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I may as well get it out the way straight away. Um, it's good to have you all back. Welcome. This is Talking Bollocks. I am your host, Howard H. Smith. I've been doing stand-up. I'm rebooted Acid Rain. I'm hosting this podcast. It's it's me. This is what I do. Stand-up Keith Platt. KeithPlatt.co.uk. Tweet me at Keith Platt. Um, you can tweet Talking Bollocks. You can tweet Acid Rain, uh, UKAC, there's all sorts of ways of getting in touch. I'm your host, and this is Talking Bollocks, and that is what I will be doing. I'll be speaking fluent bollocks from now on for the next God knows how long. This is looking like a biggie. This is looking like a big old cast. We've got, uh, speaking of which, we've got a cast of not thousands, but um, but three. That's right, we've got interviews, um, a bit of a bit of a thrash metal special coming up. Um, I don't know why I'm saying all of this, because you'll have seen all this on the uh, on the title of the podcast, and you'll, you'll have seen it, written it down in the intro, so um, so let's move swiftly on. If this is your first time, um, uh, welcome to the podcast, thanks a lot, where have you been? Um, it's about time you found us, thank you very much for tuning in. There you go, it's just rolling off the tongue today. Um, and uh, and it would be it would be remiss of me not to say hello to all of my regular bollockers and um, welcome to the Bollocast. That's right, not a podcast, a Bollocast. As in, you see what we did there? Took bollocks, took ooks out, and put cast in. So uh, thank you to Pete Gray for that. Um, nice one, mate. Cheers. Um, and if you'd like to get your name mentioned on the podcast and you'd like a little shout out, then fucking do something useful like he did. And then maybe you'll have a chance. Anyway, um, welcome. Uh, welcome. Let's get straight in, straight in to new music and, um, and the new Lamb of God tunes. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, it's Lamb of God, isn't it? It's, it's just fucking the vocals mixed ridiculously loud. Um, uh, Randy Blythe apparently is an awesome frontman and a lot of big fans. I, I, I've, I've only heard his performance on, um, in the studio and, and I'm just, you know, there he goes, a bit of, um, Randy Blythe for you. Um, no, I mean that, look, that's very, um, very reductive of me to say that and especially given my vocals which you're quite free to take the piss out of and you'll be able to take the piss out of soon on a new tune called plan of the damned which is coming out between now and the next podcast so uh, keep an ear out for that oh also uh, there is a writer's special coming out writer's special podcast coming out coming into your ears hey because i like doing that um it's, it's going to be coming at you, um, and that's coming at some some point in um, in um, June. I haven't decided when, but um, that's going to be rocking out to you probably in a couple of weeks. I'll give you a chance to chew this one because uh, it's quite a long one. So, uh, and then I get the writer's special out, thinking, featuring 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 um, uh, Malcolm Dome. Keith Carn Harris and Chad Arnold. Um, so you've got everything from Chad Arnold blogger to Malcolm Dome, traditional heavy metal writer, and in the middle, Keith Carn Harris, who has a PhD in extreme metal, folks. If you thought you were into metal, well, you're not as into metal as he is, but there you go. So, anyway, going back to, yes, that was a bit of a tangent, wasn't it? Going back to um, Lamb of God. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get Lamb of God. Um, I am, I'm, I'm more than happy to say that. Um, and I, that, that's, what can I say? I, I just don't get it. So there you go. Uh, they're supposed to be good. Um, I just really don't see what all the fuss is about. But there you go. So anyway, um, uh, what else have we got up? To? Um, uh, yeah, I see Spotify are doing uh, are doing podcasts as well now. So that's um, uh, that's another way of uh, of ripping people off. Spotify have found um, not only they're not happy with uh, paying artists fifty pence for their two million streams, now they can load up on podcasts as well. So um, and there's a bit of a theme here, which is if you like streaming, you don't like music. Yeah, it's just it's the cunt's way of listening to music. There it is. Let's bu let's bust out a cunt. <laughs> early doors. Excuse me while I fuck around with the microphone. Um, yeah, let's just fucking... If you stream music, you really don't like it that much because A, it's shit quality and B, if you like music, you, you buy it, you want to own it. I mean, fucking hell, even illegal downloaders are one, are one notch up above streamers, if you ask me, to be fair. 
because it's at, le- at least they want to own the music. At least they want to actually possess it. And, and uh, streaming just fucking does my fucking head in. Absolute waste of time and space. Moving swiftly on, because I'm just I'm on a roll, just going to fucking slag things on and th- things on, slag things off and move along very quickly. Just ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving like the big mouth cunt that I am. Um, so um, Butcher Babies followed me on Twitter this month. Hey, how about that? Butcher Babies who've received a slagging in the last two podcasts. Um, and uh, they've started following me on Twitter. Now, Butcher Babies, if you are listening or somebody in that camp is listening, it's not going to stop me slagging off your useless fucking band fronted by two worn-out porn whores. That's not going to happen. I'm not suddenly going to change my opinion. I'm not suddenly decide that all of a sudden you're good for music. You're fucking not. You're awful. Yeah? And as for the new album title, Take It Like a Man... Ooh, that's brilliant. Oh, the irony. Oh, you girls, you're so crazy. No, just fucking dumb, okay? Just a weak fucking attempt at some lame-ass fucking publicity. Because that's all your fucking band is. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a band. I would imagine that three guys there are... uh, are, are just uh, paid musos. They're, they're probably maybe minimum wage, if not something better. Um, uh, and uh, the, the music is just just fucking awful, awful. Watch one of the the videos. Very good. Worth what the videos are very good. If you watch them with the sound off, even better. <laughs> See what I did there. Um, uh, but they are. They genuinely are. But the music, fucking hell. Talk about overproduced. Pro Tools bullshit. I'd be surprised if there's any real drums on it, to be honest, because the fucking, the bass drums are absolutely quantized to an absolute fucking millisecond within their life. There, there is no power behind them. It's just, it, it sounds like an, it, it sounds like this. Yeah, imagine that, right? It's just like, oh, it sounds like there's a fucking insect in your ear. The bass drums are so weak and programmed. It's frightening. So anyway, um, thanks for following me on Twitter. <laughs> um, uh, hate what you do. Hate what you stand for. But keep following. Um, I, I don't know what the next... I don't know how we progress from now. I presume Mark, po- Mark Mike Portnoy starts um, starts following me. Maybe Gene Simmons. Um, of course, the ultimate would be Steve Jobs. He, of uh, who's basically the man... The, the main cunt behind Apple. Or at least was. Um... Uh, and until he died, but there you go. Anyway, a moment of silence for Steve Jobs. You can't, dead can't actually. Um, so, um, yeah, the the whole acid rain thing is 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 amazing. Me, um, I'm 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 back and uh, with the band, and it's it's fucking awesome. In fact, I, that might have sounded a bit weird. I might have sounded like uh, I was actually just rubbing my eyes um, and massaging my face like a fucking twat. Um, it's a hot one over here, folks. I know, I know, London, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people, anybody who's listening to this outside the UK probably is thinking of grey and rain. and It's fucking roasting. I'm sat here in my flip-flops like a cunt. Because you don't wear flip-flops outside the house. Nobody wants to see a man's feet. And, um, and if even worse, if you're wearing sandals with socks, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you're, you're a cunt, okay? Um, And in fact, if you're wearing sandals with socks and you have a selfie stick, you're a fucking double cunt and you should just hurl yourself under a truck. The next one coming along. In fact, if that is you right now, if you're walking along, listen to this podcast, right? And you've got and you're wearing sandals with socks and you've got a selfie stick on you. Please do me a favor. Step into the road of the next big vehicle. No, that's not fair. Actually, you might call a pile up. Uh, chuck yourself into a river or under a train because I, I don't want anybody else to suffer. I don't want anybody else to come to any harm. Just you, you fucking twat. Um, but yeah, it, it's a hot one here. And um, so let's see how that affects my my performance, my mental state. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the acid rain thing, we're back. I've been in the studio um, recording a new song, just the one. Um, we were in with uh, Martin Ginge Ford. Um, who's an awesome producer, um, and Matt, if you're listening, I can't remember your surname because I'm a twat, um, uh, and they're a great team, they've worked with Slipknot, Trivium, Axe Wound, Bullet For My Valentine, Machine Head, um, uh, you name it, just worked with, and, and it was just an absolute pleasure working with them, um, we've, the, the tune, I think, has come out really fucking well, I think it's come out 
awesomely, even if I do say so myself. Um, it, it, it is obviously going to be making an appearance on the podcast um, as soon as not this episode because it's not out yet. But um, I will be I will be playing it. I'll probably be playing it as many times as I fucking can um, just to brainwash you all with it. Uh, but um, yeah, it's been an awesome experience. It's, it's, it's great to be. Um, it's just great to be back in the fold, as it were, and um, and uh, we we landed some fucking super cool artwork. Um, it's a piece called Delusion Dwellers by Laurie Lipton. You can see her stuff at laurielipton.com. Laurie is L A U R I E Lipton L A L I P T O N dot com. I'll probably put a link up, guys. Um, she's fucking awesome, and. Um, I mean, I thought there was so little chance of her letting us use anything that I just sent an email to her management saying, um, would we be able, you know, would Laurie even consider giving us a license to use some of her, her art as a cover? Um, and about 10 minutes later, I got an email back from Laurie herself saying, um, which piece do you want to use? And so straight away, I was like, oh, right, okay, better go and uh, go fucking look for one then. Went straight to her website and the main picture on her website was just the perfect image. So I just went back that we knocked it back and we knocked it backwards and forwards. And there it is. And I'll put it up on the talking bottles page. It looks fucking amazing. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a real, it's a real coup. Cause I've been a fan of hers for 30 years and, and I have, I first saw her stuff when I, when I was 15 maths fans, that makes me 45. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's just it's fucking awesome, and her art is awesome. It's so fucking metal, it's unbelievable. Um, she only works in pencil and charcoal on paper, and um, yeah, she's she she's a fucking legend, mate. She's a fucking legend um, in the in the true sense. So um, so yeah, check that out. Um, the other very cool thing I've done is got myself some tickets to see one of my all time favourite artists, Suzanne Vega. Yes, her. Now, um, fuck off if you're thinking, oh, she's not metal. It does you good to get away from the metal now and again and just, you know, just open your mind. And, um, and, and she does that for me. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, I was listening to a couple of live albums recently and, and got a new album. I just thought I'd pop online and see what she was up to. And she's playing near me next month. So, got the tickets, can't fucking wait. Um, I'll tell you what I can wait for. Oh, sorry, yeah, if I, I, I could wait an entire lifetime to not see the new reality series that is in production called Golf Rocks with Nico McBrain, Sean Drover, ex of Megadeth, and Mike Mangini of Dream Theatre. And why I can wait is that golf does not rock. Golf is for cunts. Golf is something you do when you're nearly dead, right? It's the only way. You you have to exercise and you can't be bothered anymore to exercise because you're nearly dead. So you think, right, how can I make walking just a slight, just a little, give it a little bit more purpose because I can't be asked to just walk around the block. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go and walk out onto that fucking perfectly nice park that's been ruined by membership cunts. Fucking stuck holes in the field, stuck flags in it, and now it's apparently a golf course. And just watch everybody wreck their hips and knees, and all end up throwing their clubs in a fucking, oh, fucking golf, fucking golf. And and the fact that okay, so I know I've just said I just bought um, I just bought Suzanne Vega golf, uh, golf tickets, Suzanne Vega tickets, and that's not particularly impressive. And it's not particularly metal. Um, fine, but. Uh, golf is so unmetal. It's unfucking true. Golf is something that should be done by fucking banker cunts, and that's all. That's it. That's absolutely. Oh, do you fancy a game of golf? No, I'd rather wrap the club around your fucking head. Um. Anyway, that's um. <laughs> that's the golf feature that I know you all tuned in for. Um. Tuned in. It's just like fluent, isn't it? It's just it's there. There's I'm I'm just embracing it now because I've accepted there is no fucking way I am ever going to be able to get rid of that. So there you go. Um, uh, also, there's a, a festival being set up in the states um, for Paul Gray, ex um, Slipknot um, bass player, who obviously died of a drug overdose, and it's to celebrate his life, his life that, and I repeat, in the press release was tragically cut short. <coughs> Let me clear my throat of bullshit whilst we address that, shall we? Now, I am not glad 
And I am not in any way pleased that Paul Gray is no longer with us. I am a Slipknot fan. But by no stretch of the human fucking imagination can you describe somebody dying of a self... of a self-administered drug overdose. You can't say their life was tragically cut short. Their life was cut short by sheer fucking stupidity. Their life was cut short by addiction. Their life was cut short by drugs. But it was not tragic. It was an accident, right? A tragedy, right? Well, I'm fucking 9-11, there's a tragedy, depending on what part of the world you live in. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it was a good thing by any... I'm just trying to be, you know, inclusive here, right? Um, a fucking child being run over by his mum in the, in, in, the, in the fucking drive of their own house. That is a tragedy. That happened this week in London, right? That's a fucking tragedy, right? A fucking a, a, a multi-millionaire bass player who's got more money than sense and hires a hotel room out so he can jack himself full of prescription drugs whilst his pregnant girlfriend is at home. That is not a life that was tragically cut short. It was cut short. It's a tragedy for the wife and the kid. But that was just fucking stupid and fucking dumb. So there you go. I I, I can't. I, that that got a bit preachy, really, didn't it? But fuck it. I mean, you know, it's my podcast. I'll do what I fucking like. Um, um, now one thing I've got to speak about because this has been getting on my fucking nerves today. Okay, and I'm just going to go and have a look at this. Right, in, in all seriousness, right. Um, download this year, right. Are using. Um, uh, now, what is described as, right, Danifers will be subjected to a new police facial recognition system and surveillance of their on-site location via the debut of RFID wristbands, okay? So RFID wristbands allow you to uh, pay for stuff. Apparently it all crashed and nobody could get in and nobody could buy anything last night, which is fucking hilarious. But also, the, um, the police are trialling, trialling, the NEC Corporation's Neo Facial Re Re Facial Recognition System, right? Now, I put I put this on the Talking Bollocks um, page, and some people are, are actually saying, "Oh, well, it's a good thing. I mean, if if it stops people nicking uh, uh, nicking tents, then it's a good thing." And I, I, how how any fucking right thinking human being can think that the police, without people's consent, using facial recognition at the festival which is a pri which is a private event i mean oh the irony you have to sign off when you walk in you're told that it will be that it will be filmed for tv and so therefore you are agreeing to having your image broadcast on tv oh that's fine but what they're not going to tell you is that they're in cahoots with the fucking police and they're letting them trial a facial recognition system and uh, how how can that be right at a private event, how can that be fucking? Oh, but if it, if it stops people getting mugged, if it's where is all this fucking crime that's happening at Download? Where are all these people being beaten to death? Where where is this all happening? The CCTV on it monitors every year the Notting Hill Carnival, and the reason for that is there has been deaths, there's been rapes, there's been all sorts of of crime happening around that. There hasn't at the Download Festival. So why is it being fucking trialled there? Why is it being trialled at all? Facial, re facial recognition is fucking bollocks, right? Basically, you're taking 80,000 people, you're putting them all into a database because there might be 500 criminals there. I'm sorry, but that is the opposite. That is the opposite of how democracy works. We don't assume, we don't put everybody into a database so we can fish 500 people out, okay? That is absolute fucking bollocks. That's that is the that, it's the same thing as the government taking away the right to trial for terrorists. It's like, well, hang on, isn't our way of life supposedly based on the right to trial? So if we take that away, aren't they aren't they winning? Uh, I, I, look, I'm, I know I'm straying into shit here that probably only I give a shit about, but I I just cannot um, I cannot believe that there is retards out there who say things like, well, why are you bothered about CCTV? If you're not doing anything wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Really? Well, how about, A, I like my privacy, B, I don't want to be monitored, and also, I'm not doing anything wrong by the way the laws are now. What if the laws change and something that is perfectly legal that I'm doing now, oh, suddenly becomes illegal, and then I'm still being monitored for that? Let's say, like, I don't know, smoking in a public place. I mean, do we just want to try and eradicate, eradicate crime altogether? 
Let's face it, where is all this crime at download? Why is it the, the biggest crime that has happened at download within the last five years is fucking Def Leppard headlining one night. That was a fucking crime, right? And CCTV wouldn't have stopped that, right? It, I'm, it boils my fucking piss that people are so willing to just wander like sheep and allow oh let let the let the government and let the they know what it's all about they they know what's going on. it's all right question everything that is you know if you've got kids teach them to question everything it's the same thing as if if you stand at a fucking zebra crossing sorry not a zebra a pelican crossing a, a well it's called a pelican crossing i don't know why it's called a pelican crossing there are no fucking pelicans crossing right it's a let's just call it a pedestrian crossing right where you press the button and you have to wait for the like the little green man okay more and more i stand and wait and i walk across the road because i look left i look right and there's nothing coming and more and more and more people just fucking stand there and they can see nothing's coming but the man's not turned green yet so they don't so they better not cross the road fucking sheep jesus christ get a fucking just use your eyes there's nothing coming walk across the road is this a massive tangent or what what the fuck I've just gone off, haven't I? I have just absolutely gone, gone, gone right off, sailing down a river of self-obsession. Me, me, me. What I think, blah, blah, blah. That's fuck. That's enough of that shit. Let's get on to some proper fucking. Let's get on to some music. Well, not even some music. Some chat. Some metal chat. So um, anyway, here uh, is a chat I had with Michael Gilbert of um, Flotsam and Jetsam. Lovely guy. Um, we had a chat on the tour bus. You will hear um, buses going past. I will mention that. You'll hear all sorts of bits and pieces. In the background, you'll hear another interview going on with Eric AK. Don't listen to that one. Listen to this one. It's me and Michael. Right, let's just, yeah, that should be cool. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go for the H3, because it's, it, it, it's good, um, it'll do the job, but there's, the, the, with the H3 you've got, you've basically got more options. Yeah, no, that is. Well, that's cool. Cool, um, well, Michael, um, this is the part of the interview where I freak you the fuck out. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, right, my name's Howard, right? I am a stand-up comedian, I have been for the last 15 years. But prior to that, I was in music, and I was a singer in a UK thrash band called Acid Rain. Oh, really? Right on. Yeah. And um, we supported you at yeah. Astoria. Yep. And, it, and if I remember, you were watching from side stage, and I threw you into our pit. It was, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Wow. I know. I know. Uh, so that'd be 25, 26 years ago, something like that. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, yeah. And who would have thought that we'd both still look so young? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, re I remember talking to you later that um, that night, and um, and you were like, "Oh yeah, I fucked this kid's shoulder up really badly." You, you went in, and you just—it was just like you hit this one guy who just took the full force. You, you know that I heard that it's closed down now too. Like it has... uh, it's not just closed down; it's it's not there. just gone. No. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No. Uh, we I think we played there twice, and both those times have been fantastic. We used to really love playing there, you know. Yeah, well, that, that I think everybody did. Um, I think well, that that week was um, it was the it was the week of um, Testament, you guys, and oh God, there was there was three shows. Mm -hmm. I think it was Exodus, Exodus was one week with one Testament, and then um, and you guys. Yep. Um, and it was it was just like it was like you know, U.S. thrash takes over London, and um, and yeah, I mean it was it was awesome. People still still speak of those gigs as really uh, very funny. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's um, it's kind of well, yeah. It's it's, it's all folklore now. You know, I hear all sorts of stories about you know what people say went on in the crowd and stuff like that. Funnily enough, our our drummer did a stage dive that night, and it was the only time he ever stage dived. And, um, yeah, he nearly broke his back. So what happened? What? Wow, broke his back. Well, no, he nearly nearly Jeez. broke his back. Instead, he just he just um, he broke his ass basically. <laughs> <laughs> and he just so what happened, what happened in your band? What happened? Well, it's funny you should say that. This is terrible. This is it's like you're interviewing me now. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we uh, we kind of went the way of most thrash bands, which was um, 
did another we did another couple of albums from mm-hmm. playing with you and then um, we split in 91 um, and uh, and that was that and uh, I kind of tried another band and then moved no out to reunion going on or anything well it's funny you should say that um, two weeks ago um, we announced that we're coming back funnily enough today uh, I've, uh, I've announced um, a, a podcast which is because this is for my podcast called, oh, okay, cool. called Talking Bollocks which is basically now, was that, that was on Blabbermouth wasn't it yes it was I yes. read it that's why I asked you that I was like okay uh, really? okay yeah um, so yeah yeah it's, um, so it's it's it, it's happening again, but it's just it's just me from the old day. We two years ago we started out with the old lineup, mm-hmm. and we haven't even managed a gig yet. And all the other guys have just dropped out one by really? one. Yeah, yeah. So. But you're gonna get the gig again. Yeah, so, gonna get to gig again. Well, yeah, and and you've got you've you've got that kind of little grin there that is like it's it's worth doing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost like no matter what the cost, uh, no ma- any expense, you it, you it's almost like a drug addiction, I guess, when you play. And if you're not an artist. You, you, they they don't, don't, don't understand it, you know. They don't understand. Well, what's the deal? You're not making any money doing this. Well, I love doing it. It's just yeah. fun. There's just something about the whole like, yeah. You get good shows, you get bad shows, but when it's good, it's really good. Like at the energy levels and stuff like that, you just can't explain it. Yeah, yeah, you, and it, you know exactly yeah, no, no. Well, exactly. About. And the thing is, I think there's um because I carried on performing because I because I moved to stand up and you know I've been doing that for so long. Mm-hmm. Because I moved to performing, I think that's what. That's why I'm still the only one left. Every, everybody else to quit the music business. Yeah. So to try and get that back all those years ago, like you said, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not kind of speaking ill of, of those guys, but mm-hmm. not necessarily artists. They, they, you know, they, they did their stint and then it was, you know. Yeah, it's really weird. It, you know, it's the same way with us. Like we, you know, we kind of faded for a while and then uh, me and a couple other members, we, we dropped off and did some other things, you know. Yeah. Um, and I came back to the band and there's still a, there's still a, a demand for it, you know, which I'm kind of stoked about because we get to come out here and do shows again. Yeah. You know, and metal's not dead by no means. Uh, it's a little bit harder right now to do things, you know. I mean, there's the finances and stuff really aren't available for, you know, the record labels and stuff like that. Things are way different than they were 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah, I'm finding that out. But <laughs> as we all love to do it, we're finding ways to make it happen, you know. We've got this, uh, the crowdfunding and stuff going on. And, and that yeah, because I, I, I pledged to um, I pledged mm-hmm. to Ugly Noise. Yeah. Um, and, um, and funnily enough, it was, the, it was uh, you, you, you guys doing that pledge was the first, that was kind of my first experience of crowdfunding. Um, yeah, we you, were, you were there quite early, weren't you? Yeah, crowdfunding day. In terms. The, yeah, and it was that, it was still scrutinized. You know, people were uh, were saying, you know, why do these bands like this? You know, they sold a million records. Why are these bands like this doing this? They don't need the money, you know. But they don't. Under, the fans don't understand. The true fans do understand because they know. Uh, with all the theft and stuff like that, I mean, we're not making money through record sales. Record sales these days are more. Well, there is no record sales or yeah. CD sales. You know, people just snag it off the internet and they think I, it, it's not okay to do that I don't agree with that at all because you know when you buy a oil painting or a photograph you know what do you do you don't you can't steal it you gotta buy it you know yeah well the I thing mean, is the same that, thing I, I, well you, you're talking our language because on, on, on my podcast it's all we're all about paying artists for their music mm-hmm. buying buying CDs because ultimately it's not it's not just you're not just buying the music but it's, it's uncompressed sound that's yep. what we're losing yep you know I agree and, with and, you totally and, and that is it's yeah, just such the days when we'd buy a record and you'd, you'd sit there and you would you'd put it on when you got home you'd throw it on your record player I know not, record players yeah. are coming back but you'd <laughs> yeah, put that record on and you would sit there and look at the sleeve and you would just you would learn it you knew you knew all the thank you list. You knew all the songs. You knew who wrote yep. the songs. You knew the members of the band. You recognized their faces and stuff like that. That's gone. Oh, absolutely. People, yeah. people it, that's just gone. You know. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it, it's but it's it's a change in it's like anything, isn't it? It's a change in society. Yeah. You know, it's like it, it, there's this big thing, and I'm sure you have it in the states, where it's like you know, kick racism out of football, trying to keep racism out of sport. And it's like, well, you when you get rid of it in society, you'll get rid of it in sport. You know, it, it's yep. it, they're all tied up together. Yeah. So, basically, um, it, it, kids don't want to own anything. I mean, it's even got to the stage now where, as we as we've seen, that it went. It, you know, we lost CDs. Now, downloads is it's not even downloads. Mm-hmm. It's people just want to stream. 
Like, they just want to stream stuff. Yeah, and that's even yeah, it's even worse. Yes, even yeah. worse. Yeah, I look at my, I look at the the Spotify, um, <laughs> I look at the Spotify um, royalties from, um, from compared to downloads, and it is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's worthless. Yep, utterly worthless. So what do we do? How do we fix it? Yeah, well, we gotta, yeah. we got to rely on our fans. Yeah. and people who love. I mean, they're still. Uh, elite few, you know, actually metal has got the fans that I think understand the most. Uh, you know, there's still people out there, like if you read Blabbermouth, you see uh, certain posts, you know, oh, these guys should, they should make their record for free, and we should be able to get it for free. You know, they, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But you do see fans on there that say they, they, they disagree and stuff like that. So they're still, they're still out there, you know. Uh, yeah, well, every, band, every band's a business. Yeah, it, that's what exactly what it is, you know. Yeah. And we got a product, and, and we're in an industry, and we're in, we, 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 but we're in an industry where the major revenue stream has not just reduced, it's disappeared. Yep. And you look, you know, so so it's what is the business model? And the business model is, it would seem to be, um, well, we've all become. Um, I say we because we're going to be doing it soon. But um, uh, we've all become um, clothing companies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. sh shifting merch. Yep. Uh, the merch is where we do our business. You know, and um, that's that's just how it is these days. You make a uh, CD, you make a disc, you make a record. It, it's a basically a promotional thing, you know. If you get one good song off of it, two good songs that, that people like uh, a lot, you know, a lot of times they don't even listen to the rest of it. They just download the one song and, yeah. and download it for free. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Whatever. It's, it's insane, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I mean, you know, without wanting to sound like just, you know, two old bastards. But, um, <laughs> but the, the care that used to go into, like, track listing and, yeah. and you know, wow, oh, you can't you can't have that tune following that. You know, I, I, th I think, again, that's lost. It's, it's, it's the way your set list is put together to play live. It's the same way you'd put, you know, a, a track exactly. list together for an album. And, and it's a ride, you know. It's, 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 it's no different to a, a DJ, you know, who's changing beats and trying to take you on a journey. You know, various kind of like you know trips. And that's another thing. Those DJs, you know, I used to not like. I didn't get it. It's like these. DJs, what, are, what are these guys doing? You know, they're just playing other people's songs. But there's actually they got some talent going on in there. You know, some of those guys are really good at what they do. Yeah. So I gotta hand it to them too for putting in the work and learning how to do the, the DJ stuff. I have no idea how that works. Well, and al well also almost single-handedly keeping vinyl alive. Vinyl yep. alive. Yep. Well, because there were years there after CD where you know everyone was pronouncing it dead, and it was hanging in there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, who'd have thought you know that we'd be sat here saying, "Yeah, DJs, man, they're all right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're okay, guys." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like you back in the day, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, what, playing somebody's records? No, you know, that's not talent." But um, you know, yeah, we're wrong. We're wrong. So, it, so is it exclusively merchandise that's, keep, that, that's keeping you going? Are you kind of di trying to diversify? No. You know, you, we are lucky enough. We have to pay for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a tip jar. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Just What's put, cool? Put your cap out. Yeah. <laughs> Place some shoes. What's cool is uh, at the level that we're at, we still have some financial backing from record labels and stuff like that. If you know, if we choose to do so, doing the crowdfunding thing, like I said, if we if we do uh, like a, a distribution deal, you know, we'll still get a little bit of help from a label, you know, like Metal Blade. And but I mean, it doesn't cover. If they're just going to do distribution, they're not going to cover the cost of our record, you know. So, I mean, yeah. that we th those are still costs that are going to have to come out of our pocket. And that's why we do the crowdfunding thing because. You know, it gives us fans uh, a chance. We, we all know what it does now. You know, yeah. it gives them a chance to kind of be a part of the whole process and everything. And they, yeah. you know, they pay before they get to hear it, which uh, I understand can be a, a chance. You know, because if if a band makes a crappy record, then they're out their ten bucks or whatever. You know? Yeah. So. I get I look, that too. Hey, look, you're talking to a guy who, um, who, who well, yeah, I, I contributed to um, to Ugly Noise. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm totally down with it. And I think, um, in fact, I, I, I almost wanted to buy one of your posters from because you, you, you were selling a story of posters. Yes. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it had our logo on it, I'd have had one. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, no, they were. Um, uh, that was awesome. And then, and then you, you kind of like. Um, Ugly Noise was was Metal Blade, wasn't it? Yeah, we yeah. we did, or rather self-financed, but it was self-financed by them. Just, yeah, right, so okay. 
So, I mean, we do have a little bit of backing from them, but there's a lot of bands out there that don't get that chance, you know. And even with the crowdfunding, they get their their close friends and their parents and their local fans to do it for them. But, you know, what happens to them after that? You know, there's a lot of great bands that are getting lost because there's no record labels, there's no promotion for them, there's no... There's just not as many avenues. Well, there is, in a different way, there's a lot more avenues than there was for us back in the day to make a record, you know. Yeah. But, but there's also 10 million bands out there. And there's a lot of shitty ones, too. Yeah, well, that, well, that filter's gone, mm-hmm. hasn't it? That filter of of uh, a label saying, "Well, like, no, you know, these, these guys are, are good. This is good quality songwriting. Mm-hmm. No, this is this is shit. You you guys should maybe not ever do anything, <laughs> you know." But instead, but having said that, again, it comes back to that whole the way society's changed. I mean, when okay, this does sound like two old guys, but uh, two old guys talking. But back in the day. Um, if you were if you were like pretending to be a rock star in your bedroom, miming along to a to a record, mm-hmm. and you're nodding there because we all did, that's how we yep. ended up doing it for that real. That's, exactly, we, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's where we learned our moves. <laughs> yep. um, but like, if 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 your if your mum or your sister or, or someone walked in on you doing that, you'd be mortified. Now kids mime to songs and put them on YouTube oh and they're yeah they make money off of it yeah <laughs> where, 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 are you, where are we going wrong I, I don't know <laughs> we should be miming playing other people's tunes on exactly. YouTube yeah yeah mistake is creating something original that's the problem <laughs> yeah but um so I, I mean this is the, yeah this is pretty awesome the fact that you've managed to come back after all these years especially actually making it to the UK because it's it's a it's a real reach. I know, you know, mm-hmm. financially it must be, it's, it, the figures have really got to be stack up to be able to get over here. Because yeah, it's they just do. That, it's that extra little bit, isn't but it? I think this is a country that we need to, we need to play a lot more often because I, I'm not sure if we reach out, and we, we, we never play here. So, yeah, yeah, you know that that's probably another reason why we're so unknown here. You know, well if you well, if you th- if you think about it, let's face it. Okay, let's, right. So you did Bloodstock last year. Yeah, yeah. Hope, hopefully, you know that might have you know turned some more people on to us. You yeah. Know? So you did Bloodstock last year. Before that, it would have been an Astoria show, and before that, the show we played with you. Mm-hmm. So that's so that's four shows in twenty five years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We it's, need to we need to get here a little more often. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's you, you, you go where where it can work, where it's gonna where it's gonna stack up. So um, yeah, exactly. I mean. It, it, the figures are astronomical like when you put a tour together and stuff like that you you know about all this stuff yeah, yeah. and it's, it's so it hard to make it uh, you know and promoters they don't always want to pay you know they 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 don't want to be, you know. Yeah. Uh, the whole object is for them to make money too. So yeah, I know it's fucking scary. It is. It really is. And then there's also you get like you know festivals and venues or whatever wanting to take a percentage of your merchandise mm-hmm. as well. And everything. I don't agree with that at all. No, not at all. It's like well, I say what. Let's let's do a deal. You take a percentage of the merch. I'll take a percentage of the bar. Of the bar yeah, and exactly. They're, they're, it, everything's Works out even. perfect. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, Have you, do you get? Um, and, and maybe this is just like banter. Uh, my love. By the way, that is buses keep going past everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. There's nothing we can do. Um, do you get? Do you get? Um, uh, charities approach you, charity gigs and charity festivals and uh, things like that. No, we haven't had that for a while. That's huge over here. Is it? Yeah. We haven't had oh, yeah. that for a while. But if, if one came to us and it made sense, we would definitely do it. I mean, we're not... Uh, uh, definitely not above playing it. Uh, oh yeah, no, anything I, like that. You know? Absolutely, no. It's, I mean, we, you know, we have an, an established charity rate, as it were. Um, uh, as long as everything, you know, it's it's got a. You know, you, 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 yeah, you're absolutely fine. Raising money for charity is awesome, but by the same token, it's like you know, you, you can't run your band as a charity either. We should have a charity, or <laughs> yeah, we should have something like that in the United States too. We we don't really that. Uh, that I'm aware of, but you say it's a big, it's a big thing. Yeah, there, yeah. So. I mean, but lots of, lots of. There's loads and little, loads of people organising charity gigs, charity festivals, things like that. Well, Bloodstock. There's also the Sophie Lancashire, the Sophie Lancashire stage, which is this, the second stage in the in the tent. Now, um, that all of the all, all of the um, uh, proceeds from Sophie Lancaster stage go to the Sophie Lancaster um, charity. She was a girl. Uh, she was a rock. Metaler, um, kind of goth girl, and her and her boyfriend got picked on in a in a park walking home, 
uh, and um, and they uh, basically he was he was in a coma and she died. Um, wow! And so they the parents set this charity up to basically promote diversity and, and and highlight the fact that you know kids who look different can get picked on for that alone. Um, and all the bands who play that second stage, you know, play for free and um, and Bloodstock Festival every year gives a I don't know what the percentage is, but you know a decent percentage to to that charity. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. It is, isn't it? But but that but again the festival scene over here as opposed. To, well, do you, I mean, is there really a festival scene in the States? There, yeah, there is. There, uh, they do the festivals. They travel. It's like a Mayhem Festival or oh, Rockstar Energy. You know, yeah, the, yeah. That's how they do it there. It's not like yeah. a, it's always in the same place, but they just, you know, they do it 12 times around the, or whatever, however many times, 15 times, 20 times, or whatever. Yeah. But but again, it's, it's, the, it's the mechanics, isn't it? The UK being such a small country yeah. compared Everybody, to the US. I mean. Well, don't people over here, don't they do like the whole, they take their holiday time and yeah. and do, in the summers, they do the festivals, they bounce back and forth between yeah. the festivals. See, we don't have people that do that uh, in the United States. Well, we've got, I mean, download festival. I mean, mm -hmm. um, bands, band, the festival starts on Wednesday. Bands don't even take the stage till Friday. Um, so you've got so you've got Wednesday and Thursday. There'll be I mean I've done the comedy. Uh, there's a comedy stage which operates on the um, uh, on the Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I've played I've played that a lot, uh, and that's just to keep everybody entertained. I'm gonna have to come know? see you uh, <laughs> do some comedy. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean I, I do a um, I do a, a, a character which is a, a grumpy old man um, called Keith Platt. Who's a professional Yorkshireman? Um, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 send you some links or something. Oh, that'd so I'll be tweet, great. Tweet I'd love some to links. see. That. Well, yeah, there's there's there, uh, there is a compilation of me playing um, uh, playing download doing a cover version of uh, Walk by Pantera. Um, it's it's silly. It's very silly. Um, but, but yeah, for, I mean, you know, so your festival starts Wednesday, Thursday, bands Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's, it's five days. Yeah, you know, so that's a great vacation to me. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, well, it is as long as the weather's okay. Yeah. Because I've been there. Um, I've been there when it's when the weather's good and it's just it's amazing. Yeah. It, is, it is fantastic. Then when a couple of years ago when the weather was bad, it was like. It looked like a bat battlefield from the First World War. <laughs> it was just like liquid mud everywhere. But still people, they still stay oh, yeah. there, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and just tents, tents flying away, all sorts of shit. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. So what, what did you get up to while you, when you, because you left in 99? Yeah. Did you? And you didn't, did you, when did you come back? There, there was a few reasons. I came back, um, was it 2010? Uh, for Bang Your Head Festival. Uh, right. I think that was in 2009. Right, okay. So you were a decade out? Yeah. Right, okay. I, I spent some time to raise my children, and then I also... Uh, <laughs> yeah, because that, that needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't leave, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, little things like that. <laughs> I, I was just raising some human beings. <laughs> yeah, I went through a divorce, raised my kids, and then I also... Um, uh, I had a bout with with cancer too uh, we'll so shit uh, right okay beat that and right okay so hang on in, 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 10 years off to beat cancer get divorced and raise some children yeah okay see so, okay yeah so anyone because anyone who thinks you, you didn't do anything for those 10 years because you weren't in the band yeah I got really lucky I'm lucky to be alive after uh, wow uh, colon cancer you know that's a fucking bad one fucking hell yeah. wow yeah so, that is the bad one so they did some cool stuff as, as opposed a, to the good cancer yeah they, exactly yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but no that is that's like an egg time ago or something. It sounds. Yeah, what the hell is that? That's bizarre. <laughs> Unless it's somebody, is it somebody's phone. That's somebody's phone ringing. Yeah. Do you want to answer it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, can do some yeah, yeah, it's do the comedy some here. <laughs> um, uh, so wow, that's that's a lot to pack into ten years. Yeah, that is pretty phenomenal. Wow. It, you know, I didn't really have any intentions on coming back to the band. Um, there was also some management issues too, but isn't there always? Yeah, always. 
and that was one, one of the reasons, you know, that helped push my decision along. And that manager was no longer there anymore when, that, when AK asked me back. You know, he said, hey, we're doing this. You want to come back? And I said, sure, I'll come back and do a show with you guys. And that was a, a Bang Your Head Festival. And then yeah, I just I'll just do a show. Yeah, show. I'll just do another one. I'll just do another one. I'll just do another I'll do, one. Exactly. <laughs> you know who you said about a drug? <laughs> well, yeah, totally. Just another hit, man. <laughs> just one. It'll be okay. Yep. One for the road. <laughs> Downhill from there. You know, yeah, yeah, so, and here I am today. That's awesome. Today, today it's my last show today. I'll yeah, do, of course. I'll do another one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome, man. I, so, were you back, I, I, excuse my ignorance, were you, did you play on the cold? No, that's the only one. That's just, that, that, cause that, you just missed that, didn't you? Yeah, Mark Simpson was the guy who came in and took my place, mm-hmm. and he was pretty much the writer for that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, um, great guitar player. Awesome job. Yep, I mean, that's a killer album. Yeah, that is an absolute. That was one of my albums of the year that year. Yeah. That was a killer album. I don't want to hype it up too much because you didn't play on it. <laughs> do you no, play, it's all good. I like it. Do, do, it's a great record. Do you play anything? Well, the thing is, it sounds like a flux album. I mean, you know, because being a long time fan, uh, you're always a bit suspicious when it's, you know, if you Ed aren't involved and yeah. aren't the main writers, then uh, yeah. Um, I was really, really surprised. Yeah, really surprised. But uh, do you play any of it live? No, nothing off the cold. Right. Okay. I mean, there, we were going to do uh, Better Off Dead. That's probably going to be next year. We start doing that one. Right. So because we get a lot of re- yeah, we get a lot of requests for that. So I got to learn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'll call Mark up and be like, dude, you got to show me these parts, man. What the <laughs> fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm just going through that at the moment and listening to the guys. I'm going. Yeah, but. On the live, on the live video I was watching, it, he plays it here. Yeah, but on the single he plays it here. Yeah, but on the album, what yeah, he'll the probably, fuck? He'll probably be like, I don't even remember that motherfucker. What do you want? Yeah, well, me to yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Our um, is that your alarm going off? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for switching that off. You can do it. Yeah, really didn't want to. I'm so glad I didn't. Uh, really. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, well we yeah, we've got exactly that going on. It's like one of the guys going, "What's this? What's this run here?" Oh, like ask Kev, old guitarist. He's like, what's this? And Kev's like, "I don't know, <laughs> not a clue." That's, that's funny. That's why I'm not doing the. That's why I'm not doing the reformation. You we, know? When we came, um, when we came back last year, we got a lot of requests. To, uh, Keep it true was like one of the the big shows where we did that. They requested only the first two records, anything off the first two records. Really? Wow. And so we started realizing that all they want the classic stuff. Everybody wants to hear the classic yeah, but, stuff. Uh, sorry, just let me stop you there, okay? The classic stuff includes uh, uh, When the Storm Comes Down, Q Outro, and Drift. Because they are three fucking <laughs> albums. Definitely. Right. We do some, Definitely. tonight we'll do, uh, we actually do... We do suffer the masses. We haven't had that in the set for a long time. Awesome. Uh, but we also do Giddy Up right after that. They're both tuned down songs from because uh, everybody seems to like that song off Ugly Noise. And what else do we do? Uh, Swat and it flies. Uh, really? Yeah, we do that one. So fucking oh, awesome. Right awesome. <laughs> that is. I, I've got the. I've got the. Um, uh, remasters of um, Q Outro and um, oh, okay. and When the Storm Comes Down, which great job they did a great job because you hear some shitty remasters yeah but they are but that, that record needs a remix of oh the, the, who doesn't know that yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, I'm, I'm just super disappointed in the how that uh, was mastered and how I just don't like the quality of it I mean I think it could have been done a little bit well, it's, it's not the mastering is it it's the actual fucking mix um, you know it's it, it's it, well I was listening to it, funnily enough, a couple of days ago, and I was thinking, all these years later, and after the remaster, um, it it kind of has an individuality to it that certainly, when you listen to the way, and I'm sure we'll get onto this, metal production is going in you know, a bit of a production line, you know, everything gridded and just overproduced. Um, it's actually got a kind of weird kind of bit of character to it. Yeah, it's, it does have some character to it, but I just, you know, I, I do a little production too, and uh, so when I hear, listen to it back, I'm just some things I just cringe and just like, fuck, what were we thinking? I wasn't at the mix. I was just going to say, is it one of those things that you listen back to and go, what the fuck if were we thinking? I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You know, I, I, the, the weird thing is, is it, the kind of... 
it's, it's, it's the drums, isn't it? It's the drums because you've got this. You've got this incredibly powerful bass drum. Yeah, and then you've got the, then you've got the snare off another album. <laughs> it's off someone else's album. It really sounds like it's just like dropped in there. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird because the toms, yeah, they're pretty cool, and that snare just cuts through everything. Um, uh, yeah, well, hey, you know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, no. See, okay, so that that brings me to talk about the No Place for Disgrace record. Because ah, yeah. I, I wasn't happy with that mix either, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's a bit muddy. So when we decided to do a remix of that, we started trying to dig up the old master tapes. Don't know where they're at. So we're just like, fuck it. But we need to um, probably bring the tempos down on some of the tunes and get some clarity and definition in there and so we did a total uh, yeah. total re-recording of it and we got a lot of flack you know what the fuck are you guys doing you're doing a re-recording a lot of fans were like don't do it don't do it you know it's sequel whatever 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 Yeah. and then after it came out everybody was like huh alright okay it's okay it sounds alright I mean we didn't bring back exactly what we developed then but I really didn't want to. I wanted to bring it more up to date. I mean, that record's still our classic record. Uh, I just think the new one sounds a lot better, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in neither camp because um, with any band, because I, because I mean, you know, you get shit over the years for oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You try and be as nice as possible, but at some point, you, at some point, you just want to go. It's our fucking band. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. off. <laughs> we'll, we'll do what we want. I listen to those guitars and they're just going. <laughs> they just don't sound good to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. And now I, I'm kind of like, I, to, to be honest, I, I, I think um, it, it's kind of weird because for me, there was there was no place for disgrace. Um, and, and for me, the natural follow on from no place for disgrace is, is Cuatro. Mm-hmm. They they're kind of more they're, they're kind of more similar and yeah. and in, in their in their style of songwriting and in, but in the middle of that is like when the storm comes down which is which is a phenomenal record totally it, it's totally got good songs it's got great songs on oh. it but it uh, it's just the mix uh, yeah. that'll do it yeah and also I just think there was a little bit of timing uh, there as well given that um, I remember it, it came out over here it came out the same week as um, um, Sacred Reich, The American Way, um, with an ultra, ultra clear, crisp, heavy production. Yep. Um, and the two were like, you know, chalk and cheese. Yep. But also, uh, of course, on that release, there was there was the 52 Flavors or whatever it was. That, and that, when Sacred Reich did rap and it was like that was kind of the, you know that was the first kind yeah. of alarm bells that Thrash was getting corrupted and well not getting corrupted but just getting pushed out yeah you know I would love to do a tour with, uh, with them uh, especially over here That would, I think oh, that would be a great tour it'd be fucking awesome it really would it really would um, as would the people who play here in two days Voivoda playing here on Wednesday oh yeah that'd like be, to see that yeah yeah that'd be amazing that'd be amazing but yeah you because you you and uh, and Sacred Right there, there was there, there seemed to be a lot of sort of kinship between the two bands yep um, you did how much stuff did you do together well they uh, they started out you're from like the same as, kind of yeah we're all, yeah. we're all from Phoenix so right we all yeah. came from the same place um, and they they kind of started out as like uh, some of them are road crew guys you know and then they ended up, yeah playing a you know they were doing setting up our stuff but they got a band together and they they started kicking ass you know yeah big time I remember hearing them for the first time with my mouth dropped I was like look these guys are good what the hell <laughs> well I, funnily enough um, I'm um, uh, I'm friends on uh, on Facebook and, and in real life um, with um, uh, Craig from Forbidden oh okay um, and um, I saw um, I saw a f- uh, Facebook status of, do, you, do you do you still have an, um, any contact with Greg um, Greg Hall oh yeah yeah, yeah. We, uh, he actually uh, we played our our warm up show to come out here we played Phoenix 
and he he was excited about it. He came down and tech for Jason, our new drummer. Oh, awesome. and he was yeah he brought uh, Greg brought his drums down and he wanted Jason to play them, so he teched for Jason that night. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Man. It was it was really cool because I read that really sad face. Well, not sad, but that kind of final Facebook status he put up a, a few months ago, where he was saying like you know he'd been thinking a lot about you know, who he used to be and and, and who he is now and kind of letting go of the past as it were. He's such a great guy. Um, Greg's yeah, you, awesome. could, you could you could totally tell as well. <laughs> you could totally you. tell. It's um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this yeah, he loves to play. He's a great drummer too, and he loves to play. Yeah, I mean, I would like, I'd, I'd like to do shows with him. I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. funny. He's funnier than hell. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, 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 most drummers are, aren't they? <laughs> I, 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 I remember when I was a kid, my mum was in, in the theatre and stuff like that. And I remember even when I was a kid, my mother used to say, oh, all drummers are mad. I was like, what does she mean? Oh, bass players are mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of, yeah, the rhythm section in general. Yeah. 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 It's uh, drummers standing up. That's the weird thing for me. Drummers, like, doing the last thing, standing up and, you know, it's like, no, sit down. Sit down behind the pile of wood. Do as you're told. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down at the back. Nice. Stay out of the way. <laughs> uh, just hit things for a living. Remember. Um, but um, where, where are we going? You said that. Um, yeah, you were saying that the um, you came back in. Sorry, you came back into yep. the band um, for that festival, and it was just going to be one song, and then you ended up starting writing. And yeah, they 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 called me because I did a lot of the writing before you know before I quit, and then. Uh, uh, Craig Nielsen was playing drums in the band at the time and you know he was like after Banger Head Festival he called me up and, and said uh, well, you know you want to start writing with us and I'm like yeah I'll start writing some stuff and uh, I already had a bunch of crap written anyway you know because I, I never stopped playing you know so you know and then I didn't really present it to them because uh, you know, it was just kind of getting a little squirrely. I thought the the, the way they were writing songs. I, I've never written with with Mark before, and that was what was getting ready to happen. Right. And uh, then he ended up quitting. And then yeah. And then Ed came back. Yeah. Uh, and then Kelly came back. So it was like every all this stuff changed. So, but it was Craig who got you in. And then no, AK is the one ah, that right, sorry. Me. Yeah, right, and, but Craig was calling me about uh, songwriting and stuff like that. And uh, and then he quit. Yeah, basically. Well, I don't really know what happened with that. I think. Right. Okay. Uh, Who knows what happened? We'll just, but it wasn't me. We'll, we'll fudge that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the most. That's the most important thing. It wasn't me. <laughs> Yeah right. So really I started writing again, and uh, I think they have uh -oh, a pretty good got... understanding of what. Oh fuck! She's uh, music, so right. She okay. needs to wake up. Right. Okay. Uh oh. I think I just switched it off. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, I noticed <laughs> you played this song. Right. Uh, so yeah, it, that's how that happened, and yeah. then uh, started writing tunes, and it's uh, ugly noise came about. But the and but the old like the that that. That classic lineup just just coming together like that. It was just, it worked just out. one of those things. And it, it's even more classic than you think because uh, just before Ugly Noise, I had called Newstead and said, uh, I got some tunes, but you want to help me write some of this stuff? And he's like, Well, what do you got? And I sent it to him. And same day, he calls me back. He's like, You got to come to San Francisco. So I flew to San Francisco, started, we wrote uh, Kitty Up and Ugly Noise, you know. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. And we thought we thought he was going to come back, uh, but at that time we were talking with Michael Spencer, who is considered an original member because he took yeah. Jason's place as soon at right after he left. You know, he's yeah. the one that basically called Michael and said, "Hey, I'm leaving Flotsam and going to Metallica. Do you want this? Because you're the guy for this job now." And you yeah. know, Michael came in. A lot of lineup changes over the years, but actually, right now with Steve Conley, Michael. And Jason Bittner in the band, uh, I think it's our best lineup ever. It's wow. great, um, and we're writing cool. right now. And some of the stuff that we're writing is is going to be over the top. So. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, in because because Ugly Noise was very um, it felt to me kind of like um, almost where not where drift left off, but where you'd have gone if you'd drifted in that direction. Everybody <laughs> says that, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I got a lot of flack about. Uh, my sequences and stuff like that because I incorporated a lot of electronic stuff in the background and, yeah. and I got a lot of flack about that you know because it's not metal it's not it, 
But I, I'm a big fan of Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails, and I like yeah, that. Me too. You know, think they it's heavy, it's dark, it's got it's dirty to me. Yeah, but, yeah, but you guys, you, you guys were doing this like 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you know. I mean, it's again, you listen to when the storm comes down. There's shit going on there that, yep. that no one else was doing back then. So I, yeah, um, I love that the whole. Uh, I mean, Cuatro was fairly was it was Neil Kernan, it's very clean polished like a very heavy yeah, sort of queen's right kind of vibe right but but then you you went a lot, well yeah there is experimental so there's uh, hypodermic mcnight snack which is bizarre and has eric saying i think we're nicked which sounds really weird because that's kind of like english slang we remember we were listening to that back in the day at the end of that song just going like does he say we, we've been nicked like, that's, that's, that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. says a lot of shit. I don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> um, but um, but and you went more in that direction with um, uh, with drift as well. Yeah, it's just kind of like, well, yeah, it was, it was full of it was lots of uh, uh seventh son of seventh son. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, I like that. That's true. Yeah, it's kind of like where you kind of took it to its ultimate. It couldn't really go. You'd kind of got where it was going then. Yeah. Um, and then high was after that, and that was. I don't know. That was when I was checking. High out. was not a high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was checking out. The band was falling apart at that time. You know. Yeah. But, I mean, it's still got some moments on it. Yeah. It's funny because your 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 assessment of those records is pretty much like you know. It's Speaking as a fan, it's just, yeah, you know, that is, it's, but that's a relief. There's nothing well, worse I'm than I'm a fan of metal. So well, yeah, but there's nothing worse than sitting down with, with, with people yeah. saying like, you know, and, and, and they're like, you know, really enthusiastic about records that, you know, were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. and, and not even the passing of time has made them realise that they were horrible. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, those. I mean. The like so I, actually, it was going back to that you re-recording um, no place. The when the storm comes down, um, it's the only album with Troy on bass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Troy seemed to sort of come in an incredible player. Incredible player. Uh, and then nipped into prong for an album. Yeah, you know what? It was and really it was weird just how it worked out because bounced did, about. We did that tour with prong and somewhere midway in that tour he started riding on, on Prong's tour bus and so we're like what the, right. what the hell is this guy doing and next thing you know he's in Prong so I mean right. okay. it, it wasn't gelling with us not that he did that but I guess just as a player he was a great player great guy super funny dude fun yeah. to hang out with but you, being a musician you know that just if the chemistry right. not there, yeah. Yeah. it's not there you know and uh, obviously the chemistry was right with him and uh, Tommy Victor and uh, so, okay, well, if that made him happy, great, you know. And then we went on to get Jason Ward after that. Another lineup change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, but uh, Jason... Yeah, he monster, was in for the long term. Though, monster he? bass player. Did a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cuatro was his first album, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember I'm, I bumped into Tommy. Tommy's been on the show, actually. And... Um, uh, he, um, I, I bumped into him in Leeds when they were on, on, on a tour. I can't remember which album it was, and he had a Flotsam and Jetsam when the storm comes down. Uh, when the storm, when the when the storm comes down, tour T-shirt, and I traded it. I traded um, that shirt for I'm an acid rain tour T-shirt. He traded one of our shirts. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you got the better deal. <laughs> no, um, I've still got it somewhere, man. It's, um, but uh, yeah, it was because um, Jason came in. Uh, like you said, it, the chemistry, the personal chemistry is there, but if the music chemistry is there, it's, it's, it's all got to be. It's so nebulous, isn't it? Trying to explain it to somebody who's not been in a band yeah. or something like that. But you know what? Without even knowing it, they they do know it because when they hear it on a record, or they go to a show. They, they figure it out pretty quick. I mean, yeah. like, like, tonight the people who show up will figure it out real quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I, I would say it's like you, you, you know, if you start playing with somebody, if you start smiling, yeah, that's. That's it. See, we used to be it's all, all about the scowling on stage. You know, we've got to look mean and tough. Yeah, you know, we're smile now, you know, because it's all. Oh no, fun. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a record. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Um, 
like but it is isn't it it's, it's like if you're getting somebody new in you know or, or anything like that which you'd have a lot of experience with um, it is like that when you first start playing with them you, I don't care what anyone says you know you know within the first few minutes well you know you, you get a feeling within the first 30 seconds exactly and then that's you, but it's then true. you, you want to kind of reinforce that feeling you're just kind of like you know oh you know please make this be okay well when when steve Conley joined the band uh, for guitar players that that's exactly what happened he you know we went through about three or four guys and you know before the end of the first song they play with you, you know? yeah uh, and there's nothing more depressing than knowing yeah. that you've got to give them another, two more like, songs yeah yeah and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, yeah. Steve came in and it, it was really weird. Steve's lived in Phoenix all this time and I didn't even know him. And I made it, you know, I cold called him one day and said, dude, uh, you know, gave him some used car salesman shit about the band and stuff like that. <laughs> and he, he uh, ended up coming down, you know, he had his little sour face and he's like, okay, man, what do you want me to do? And, uh, did you learn any of the tunes? He's like, yeah, I learned, I learned like eight of them or something like that. I'm like, okay, which ones do you want to play? He rattled off the name. I think it was Iron Tears, and uh, we blew through that. And I remember me and Kelly just looking at each other, going, "Oh my God, this is my man, this guy." You know, we don't want to tell him that right now because we want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to work. You know, we don't want to give it to him right now. Yeah, but we did a, um, a couple of rehearsals, and then we did have a festival show, and we kind of sprung that on him. It's like, dude, you want to do a gig with us? Uh, well, which one? Uh, Stone Sour. You want to do that gig with us? Oh, hell yeah! And you know, we've never told him. Uh, He's in the band yet, so he's still he's still waiting for us to tell him he's in the band. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So you so you did a Stone Sour show? Yeah. Oh, all right, cool. cool. Love that band. That's one of my favorite bands. I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, yeah, yeah especially the Slipknot fans are like, fuck that. But well, yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm big Stone Sour fan yeah, and Slipknot okay. fan, too. So. Well, I'm a big Slipknot fan. I, I don't... It's not that I don't like Stone Flower. Uh, Stone Flower. Um, it's not... It's, it's, it, it's it's just not what I'm about. To me, it's kind of like substandard B-side Alice in Chains. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, that's that's not it's not my thing. Hey, but having said that, you know, voice of a generation, Corey, I mean, wow. Oh, you've got the other voice of a generation, yeah. right, sat right That over guy there. over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He wears panties. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's... As a as a as a vocalist, I use the term in the loosest sense. Sat next to this guy. Um, yeah, just um, yeah, just absolutely in a class of his own. Um, and always what always what set you guys, what I felt set you guys apart. Um, you know, it, it meant that you it, yeah, you should have been so much fucking bigger than you were. Um, it meant that you could, but it did. You know, you like, I keep coming back to Cuatro. It's like fucking hell. You know, if every Queen's right fan in the world heard that at the time, they'd have been like, wow. Yeah, we, I think I might like Thrash. That, that was an, like an MCA thing that uh, I don't think they knew how to quite handle that record because. It, or maybe it was the timing. I don't know. It could be a, a number of different factors. Because you have Neil know. Kernan and everything. It's Neil like, Kernan, we got, you know. Yeah. Uh, who knows what happened. I think it was uh, just MCA not knowing. Yeah, but that's always the thing is in major labels. Just yep. never. Well, we had, we had an A&R rep that was, uh, that was pretty great to us. I might, and, I might just sit here with the phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had great, uh, great, great rep at MCA, but... The, it's like the higher ups, you know. It's yeah. it's the executive stuff. Elton John is they. That's what they want. They want another band like that. But yeah, that's not how metal operates, you know. Well, the thing is, is they don't have the infrastructure. They don't. They don't understand it. So, or, so they're not fans. Yeah, exactly. But they don't. I mean, we were we were on under one flag, which was a subsidiary of Music for Nations. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Metallica left after Master of Puppets. We arrived to take their place. <laughs> um, uh, look how that works out. Um, and um, you know, it, 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 you, you just walk straight in the door of a bunch of fans, gold records all over the walls of like Metallica and uh, and then you see like, you know, you're on the same label as Possessed and Death and you know, fucking everyone basically. Yep. And you can't, it, you can't lose. It's an established structure, you know, and they know who to do and they, like what bands you should tour with and, and all the rest. Whereas, like you say, the big, 
know, major labels just don't see any they don't, of it. Yeah, they don't see any of it. They don't understand it, and it's kind of like, well, they, like I said, it's, it, they don't have that infrastructure in, and they don't understand. Metal has always been that kind of that outsider, just make sure yeah. you put your and right being a major there. corporate yeah. label trying to, mar- <laughs> <laughs> trying to market to outsiders is never going to work. They're missing though because they, they got Metallica, the biggest rock yeah, band, uh, yeah, well, cool. out of maybe the three, yeah. five biggest rock bands <laughs> ever, they're there. You know, they're yeah. on that list. And it's metal. Actually, yeah, and it, well, yeah. one of the one of the great quiz questions: whether you, uh, um, the biggest selling album ever in the history. Of ACDC Black, uh, Black and Black? No. Back Thriller. Black Blue? Thriller. Oh, well, that's not but, a rock record, though. No, but the biggest selling album is Thriller. But the Thriller. second, yeah, but the second biggest selling album of all time, Back in Black. Back in Black? People just like frequent. It's great, great quiz question. And no one sees that coming. Everyone's like Rolling Stones, Beatles, Elvis, rattling all this stuff off. No, 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 no. Yeah, and it, it, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Um, so how long are you on the road anyway? Because I'm looking at your itinerary here thinking, like, right, okay. Uh, we are out for about a month right now, the first leg of it. Um, and then we take three weeks off, and we do a short tour in the States of the East, and then we head off to uh, back to Europe again. Oh, right. So, so, so are, you, are you guys all, are you all doing this full time now? Uh, full time, yeah. Yeah? Do we, do we still have jobs at home? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I'm an IT guy at home. So oh, really? I oh, so you work you work from home. I do. Yeah. Can I just show you? That I've got a problem with my laptop. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> what you need to do is uh, fix now. Yeah, what you need to do is uh, reboot that. <laughs> yeah. Plug it in. <laughs> yeah. You mean switch it off? And switch it on again. <laughs> Um, right, well, I'm, I'm getting the um, getting the tap on the shoulder there, so okay. um, it's uh, it's time I was gone. But um, <coughs> awesome catching up with you, man. Dude, Absolutely yeah, you too, man. Totally awesome. Are you gonna uh, set me up with some links for? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, stuff? What I should do is um, f- either find you on Facebook or. Oh, I'm easy to find on Facebook, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This thing isn't as long. <laughs> for your listeners, I'm, I'm, that's my beard I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So put your dick away. Come on. It's good to see you, but really. <laughs> um, right, okay. So it's. Um, I'll just find you, um, I'll just find you on Facebook. I'll send you a friend's request. Um, Again, thank awesome you. Thank, thanks. No, not at all, man. It's really good to see you. I'm really looking forward to doing this. Cool. Killer. Hey, and next time you're in the UK, we'll come and support you. Oh, okay. that's great. And we'll do that, like, have, like some weird sort of 27 year anniversary shit. <laughs> all right. Cool, man. Well, take I'll care. I'll throw you into the crowd, all right? Yeah, yeah, you can get me back. All right, cheers. So, wasn't that just a lovely little chat? Um, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, uh, what a guy. Um, we. Um, uh, we uh, we are now we're we're friends on Facebook now we're buddies. Um, I was really it was really cool to catch up with Michael again and um uh, and and yeah without without getting all bromance about it it, it, it definitely felt like we um we were catching up with an old friend um yeah we only played with them once but it it's amazing it's amazing the the, the just the the depth of kind of connection that exists between uh, musicians of that era or I guess of musicians who, who all come from the same era or I, I I I don't know how to describe it I really don't but there was just um it was really cool it was it was just really really cool um and we and we've messaged each other a few times on on Facebook and so I've sent him some links and things and um you know it was just a re- just a really good a really nice guy and and I don't I don't come away from um I don't come away from uh many interviews feeling like you know I've made a new friend as it were or anything like that um but th- but that was genuinely one of the ones where well well it's very 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 rare if ever that happens but it, that, I really that's that's definitely how I felt um it was just it was just really cool I hope that came across in the um, in the conversation as well because um, that's de- that's definitely how it felt and um, and the the show itself was f- just fucking awesome absolutely awesome they were note perfect I mean Eric um, is probably well one one of my heroes of vocalists definitely in the top three thrash vocalists ever um, such a hero that um, I didn't um, I didn't really want to go up and bother him at all. Um, so I didn't, I didn't speak to him or say hello or, or anything like that. I probably would have just um, turned into a gibbering wreck, a bit of a uh, uh, just a complete 
gibbering schoolgirl, to be honest with you. And that's no disrespect to no disrespect to schoolgirls who would have probably held up under a, a better scrutiny than I would have done. Um, uh, but yeah, it was really really cool. Hope uh, hope you all like that and um, uh, new flot stuff coming. So it's I mean it goes without saying. That I, they, they are so underrated. The albums that I mentioned um, when I was talking there, please do check them out. I mean, Cuatro is a fucking beast of an album. It really, really is. And When the Storm Comes Down is also as well. Cuatro for straight ahead fucking metal is proper metal and is just fucking awesome and and when the storm comes down is just it's from another planet it's just a just a a quirky left of center fucking thrash gem um totally overlooked and over uh, and um and, and so check those out now bizarrely um uh, I, I was just i got a, i got a, um, a message not a message but a notification on my phone and i had a look and basically there's an article on um uh on uh some quick thoughts on streaming becoming the dominant way that's that, uh, mu that society consumes music and it's by matt denny and he's and he's basically like 13 points about like streaming being like fucking shit and all the rest of it and i didn't know why i was um why i was in it. there's loads of comments and, and he's tagged me saying howard what's your take on this um how bizarre is that because i was literally ranting about streaming not a few minutes ago so um so Matt, I am actually writing this. Listen to the podcast when it comes out. Was just this is fucking awesome, isn't it? <laughs> I was just talking about it. Um, uh, yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, well, wow, well, it was great, po great podcast this month, Howard. Yeah, I really like the bit where. Uh, yeah, where, where you were uh, where you were on Facebook, you fucking twat. Um, quite rightly, uh, call me out like a bitch. Um, yeah, no, absolutely, that was uh, that was bang out of order. Um, so um, so anyway, um, uh, back into um, actually something that sort of slightly tags onto that whole debate as well, um, and that was that's uh, Spotify and um, uh, Pandora as well um being uh being site being sites or programs that recommend music to you and I, I heard somebody say the other day oh well they they've they've replaced the um the guy in the record store um because like you know they you, you get directed to other stuff that you're gonna like now my problem with that is that is that uh, there's no algorithm there is no software that can replace hu human beings because the amount of people that i know i mean I i'm looking across at my cd collection now and there's there's albums in there by bands in there that that I, I never ever would have thought i'd like but i did and no looking at the rest of my collection would point you in the direction of me liking that the same way and, and so what i'm saying is that those programs they'll only offer you stuff that you like based on previous choices and based on other people's choices what it doesn't really understand is genuinely your taste the way a human being would would see you come into a shop and go oh right okay now look this is totally not you but you might like it there's no algorithm written that can do that it's the same the same way e-harmony and shit like that and, and and online dating well i've got loads and loads of friends who've hooked up with people who said yeah you know not my type at all i, I, I you know I, I don't know how we ended up together but you know we just did you know it's really crazy and, and, and that happens all the time and yet you know dating sites all they want to do is yes obviously howard's on a dating site um all they want to do is, is is send you people that they've matched via psychometric testing and all the rest of it is like oh yes you'll be a perfect match yeah but what about the people who aren't a perfect match but would be a match it's it, it, it's the same thing you can't replace that it's it, it, you cannot replace that and and so what i'm saying ultimately is you know everybody just keep communicating keep putting new stuff out there keep telling your friends keep sharing and saying look you know this might not be your kind of thing but give it a listen give it a try um you know it it's it it, it it's the only way of really truly discovering all of the music that that you can that you you're gonna like um so yeah you know that's um that that's that really um <laughs> Um, it, it, look, I'm just just a little thing. I am really, really enjoying um, 
doing the podcast so i really am i mean my my enthusiasm i hope hasn't waned any um i'm I, we've got some cracking episodes coming up um the writers uh special is going to be really cool um uh, acid rain we're going to be going on tour in october and um, i'm gonna i'm gonna take um i'm gonna take all of all my podcasting shit with me and um uh and and yeah and do and maybe do some stuff on the road give you a just give you a, an in not an insight but yeah just see you'll see what it's like on the road and um uh and you know maybe just you know get random people on and whatever um but it's just you know look i i do genuinely appreciate it and i know i know sometimes um I do just get fucking lost in my own in my own world with my own opinions and all the rest of it. But then again, I guess that's why some of you tune in. I mean, I tune. You see, it's I'm never I'm I'm, I'm not getting stressed about that anymore. Um, but um, I, I think um, uh, I, I think really I I should have some po- uh, some talking bollocks T-shirts made with talk, talking bollocks on the front and just back, and just on the back, you know, tune in every month or something like that. Just for that could be our in joke. And that reminds me, actually, I haven't said this for a while. But let's remember, when you're at a gig, somebody shout, bollocks! Somebody else shout, bollocks back! And somebody else shout, talking bollocks! Because we got to get that going. And also, when you're around anybody with um, uh, any kind of device with a podcast app on it, when they're out the room, or it doesn't have to be when they're out the room, take it off them, do it in front of them, or tell them to do this. But tell them to subscribe, put talking bollocks into their podcast app. It appears. Tell them to, to, to subscribe. That's it. That's that's all we want. And if they happen to leave the room and they've left some kit around, do that. Okay. Uh, and, and that reminds me, if you happen to be on iTunes, please do us a review. Got my first four star review instead of a five star. Yeah, thanks for that, bastard. Um, you know, talk about uh, damned by faint praise. Yeah, criticised for the podcast being a bit too long. Hey, fucking hell. I, 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 what's a guy supposed to do? Loads of you were saying, we want longer podcasts, we want longer podcasts. Somebody goes on and fucking gives me a four-star review because they're too long. What the fuck? Hey, well, you can't people, you can't, you know, please all the people all the time. I'll settle for pleasing you cunts for two minutes. <laughs> um, but you're my cunts, okay? That's, and, and no one else is. And I've got your back, all right? <laughs> no matter what anyone says, no, no matter what anyone says about me, I've got your back. Um, anyway, uh, look, enough jibber jabber. Let's get into another uh, another interview. Um, the next one is with Desolator. Um, I, um, I I did this uh, on the same night as Voivod um, because they were um, uh, the same night as Voivod. Eh! Same night as Flotsam and Jetsam because they were um, uh, they were supporting. Um, and uh, the interview is with Jamie Brooks. Um, of um, uh, Desolator, and this is basically uh, me and Jamie in the uh, in the un- uh, well in the um, the World's End, which is the pub that's ab- that the that is above uh, the underworld, and um, and it's it's us having a really good laugh. Actually, is we're just having a bit of a giggle. So um, so this is uh, this is me and Jamie on the on the same day as the last interview was recorded. Enjoy. <laughs> So um, uh, here we are. I am. Um, I'm in the bowels of. Uh, this, this is the underworld. No, this is World's End. The World's End. Yeah. That's right. So um, yeah, I'm in the bowels of the World's End with um, Jamie Brooks from Desolator. Oui. Um, yes. Yeah, say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so far, we've discovered that um, I've just missed his entire band set, and he's forgotten to bring his Acid Rain albums to get signed. So uh, it's just typical British disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a couple of uh, fucking idiots. And. Um, uh, for regular listeners, I just want you to know that there was a, a band uh, are on now playing in, at the gig now called, is it Blixem? Yeah, it's their first date of the tour. It's their first date, right, okay. Yeah. And they're a thrash band with a female singer? I think so. Yeah, and so uh, uh, all I'm saying is I'm not in there. We're listening to Judas Priest. We listen to Judas Priest, that means I'm not homophobic. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean I'm not a sexist. Well, no, you can I'm, listen to it, are you enjoying it? Well, no, the thing is, I, I, it's not a word of a lie. They have just come on, haven't they, Blixen? They have just yeah. come on. They're literally about three bars in. The only reason we're here and, is and you walk, Yeah, and you walked out. I was like, right, okay, let's let's <laughs> do let's, let's do. There's a lot of people in there. Yeah, yeah you, you don't need to be a body there because there's enough people there. It's fine. <laughs> well, no, it's just the fact that um, uh, I've I've got this thing. Basically, I don't I don't like any female fronted bands. 
It's not that I go out. What about Warlock? It's not that I've set out. About who? Warlock. Warlock. Yeah. Yeah. The the only good Doro Pesh is a topless Doro Pesh. <laughs> oh, right. uh, and I had the poster on my wall back in the what? day. Oh yeah, I had that metal. I had that Can mega metal, me mega metal Kerrang, <laughs> topless poster stuck on oh, my mate. wall can and you... all I can say I'm not going to say it wasn't stuck on my wall with blue tack oh, <laughs> can you uh, can you send a photo of it to me uh, you, you, can, you can you use Google or DuckDuckGo which is a better search engine um, <laughs> um, and and, um, and you just Google it you'll see the topless pictures of right okay I'll tell you what I've got my homework this is going to be this is going to be a first right <laughs> um, so anyway look I, uh, oh no I've got no signal so I can't actually show you the oh, pictures now no um, <laughs> So anyway, you're called Desolator, yep. which as everybody knows is a Philosopher Jetson um, song. Sorry, Desolator. Oh, come on, oh, mate. Fuck it. <laughs> hey, I'll sing it for you if you want. Go on. Go on, no, no, I won't. I've, I've just, spent, just spent an hour on their bus and I was like, I was sat, about, um, sat chatting to Michael, who I chucked off stage back in the day. Yeah. And um, someone's just brought a suitcase in, pulling a suitcase behind them, shaped like a coffin. Yes, we're in Camden. Um... Uh, uh, um yeah, and, and I was sat like about five seats away from um, Eric, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" I I haven't spoken to him. Really? I just, no, I've sp- I, and, and we, Michael was chatting away and stood up. And I'm just, I haven't spoken to him at all. Is that bus nice? Um, it, it's a it's a bus. Has it's it got the optional bus. saucy lady? Well, hasn't haven't they all? <laughs> haven't they all? Ours doesn't. We did have it, but not uh, yeah. I, well, anyway, yeah, back, so, back, anyway, back to the uh, <laughs> back to the gig, right? Right. So, it's your, it's your birthday as well. Happy it birthday! Is, yeah. How old are you today? I'm uh, 18. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> um, look, mate, I'm 45. So don't start uh, pretending I'm, you uh, don't know how old you are. <laughs> I'm 27. 27. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is that surprise? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did, didn't I? There's nothing I can yeah, do about that. Right. And and um, so it's your birthday. It's your 27th birthday. Yeah. And um, it's your your good lady. Is in Camden somewhere? No, unfortunately not. She's she's got a very high profile job. I I, I can't say what. What being your <laughs> girlfriend? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She's a frontman of a fresh band's girlfriend. You know, it's a, no, no, enough of that nonsense. No, yeah, she was she was gonna come, but um, she works in London, but she's got she has a very early start and. You know. And uh, am I right in thinking that she's also um, now with child? What? No. Why'd you hear that? <laughs> right, I'm thinking of something completely different. <laughs> no, God, he's fucking hell. <laughs> right, okay, so that's not uh, right. I'm going right. Once this is finished, right, I'm going to show you on my Facebook who this girl is because I thought it was your girlfriend, and you can tell me who it was. Oh God, or it is. <laughs> well, whoever it is, she's up the door. Well, we, we, we've got a cat. <laughs> yo, house is full of pussy, yo. <laughs> you a player, yo. Yeah, yeah, I've got a cat and a, and a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm looking up. I say, well, this is the most fucking, this is the most thrash metal interview know, ever, right? Really? I've got a cat and a girlfriend and it's my 27th <laughs> birthday. And we're drinking <laughs> lime and soda and a bottle of water. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, bring it on. Um, it's going to, yeah, tonight's going to go off. Yes. So no, she's not with child, unless, I've, well, uh, unless, unless I'm missing something. Yeah. Well, she did stand next to me for 20 minutes three months ago, so uh, you, you I wouldn't just, be you just fucking ooze, surprised. You just ooze this masculine... I just ooze jizz. Yeah. 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 You just have to stand next to her to get someone break Thra- Thrash jizz, basically. Thrash jizz. Thrash jizz, yeah. So, yeah, well, we, yeah, we've got a joke about that, right? <laughs> oh, fucking hell, right. I hope you haven't. Got a high jizz jacket. Hang, at hang, home. hang, hang, hang. Oh, <laughs> oh no! I've got a, I've, he's, I've, he's gone there. I've got a high, I've got a high jizz jacket. Home, so you can see me coming. That that is actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, it, but thank you very much for not saying on the end of that. You can use that. You, <laughs> you can use that you, in your you, act. Well, you can't use that because it's not even my joke. I've got a high <laughs> jizz jacket, so people can see me coming. No. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> What, have you only just got that bit? Yes. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> hey, before she didn't get pregnant. <laughs> okay. um, who's this Who's this playing now then, in the background? That's, it's not a fresh I don't know. Yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> Actually, I think it might be Apocalyptica, because there's some cellos involved. Um, yeah, yeah. I've seen Ap- Apocalyptica a few times, actually. It's fucking That's really good. It's download. Yeah, I saw him, um, I saw him headline in... Um, uh, I was going out with a girl who was a classical musician. Yeah. I went out there for a long time. Like a real musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we used to. This sounds terrible. She used to play. She used to play the piano, and yeah. I would sing. We'd invite friends around and things like that. I was going through my 
I, I do. I was going through my let's do dinner parties, darling phase, which I now look back on, uh, 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 look back on, and call um, times when I was a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> what? So that hasn't ended. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm doing it right now. But you, you're better than me at that. <laughs> right now. Oh, no, right now. I'm, I'm grade A. No, 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 no. Yeah, grade, not class. Grade A. Um, are you staying for uh, just total tangent? Are you staying for flots tonight, then? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you've got a bit of a drive. Well, Southampton, isn't it? It's not that Yeah, far. it's about two hours. It's no problem. Yeah, fuck that noise, Jack. Right. How cool is that? Sorry, um, sorry about this, right, folks. I've just seen an agnostic front mirror in this pub. Um, oh no, it's not. No, oh, fuck it, it's not a mirror. It's a t-shirt in a frame. It's a t-shirt in a frame. Yeah. And I was getting. I'm really fucking easy to please today. That, <laughs> that, that, that bodes well. That um, that suitcase shaped like a coffin coming in earlier. <laughs> that that had me excited. <laughs> and that agnostic front folded t-shirt. I was going, oh my god, look at that. <laughs> getting way too excited. So anyway, um, we. I've already asked you. Um, uh, actually, the first thing I said to Jamie, um, you can tell he's an acid rain fan because he's got that, he's got that total mindset of. I said to him, first thing I said to him was, "I'm really sorry, I missed your entire set," <laughs> and he said, "Oh, that's all right, we played like shit." So, um, but it's, so, it, seriously, did did you? Uh, well, we we could have played better. What you was know. wrong? Uh, a combination of things. Do you know what was wrong? You weren't there, that was what was wrong. Oh, yeah, fuck that's, you. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah. yeah, fuck off. Did it, it, I was sound I, checking with uh, I'm Genghis Khan. I'm not carrying the oh, fucking can no, no, for no, no, this. No, 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 yeah, well, we didn't write that. That's a tribute to bad news, mate. Yeah, but you played it fast. Rick Mail never came either. I should have dug him up on my way over. Oh, God. Um, oh. No, in, 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 <laughs> in all seriousness, um, uh, you're a three piece. Yeah? We are. Is uh, for our sins. Thrash band, three piece. Sodom, really? Early creator. So you're comparing yourselves to Sodom and early creator, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what that's what a cunt would do. It's, it's, that's it's, what a cunt it, would do. It, well, Luckily, I'm not a cunt. <laughs> well, no, it well, it's like you got a uh, whiplash. Motorhead. Whiplash. Yeah. Yeah. Since three when did, have you met anybody who goes, oh yeah, one of my favourite thrash bands is Whiplash? Not even fucking relatives of people who in Whiplash, <laughs> I really like Whiplash. go, oh, we're one of our favourite fresh well, bands. The only reason anyone's heard of Whiplash is because the drummer, John Scaglione, I believe his name was, stood in for Dave Lombardo. He was the first guy to play in Slayer after Dave Lombardo. And he played in Crater. When he left the first time round. Did he really? Yeah. He did one Crater album. Did it, he? It was the one album that Venta wasn't on. And it was, um, I think it was mid-90s. That's a bit bizarre, isn't it? He did one album, and I think he did a few tours. I think he did a few tours. <laughs> <laughs> so he needs to get... It's just this fucking music oh, in the right. background. Bloody you music. Know, yeah. Fucking metal in the background. It's annoying. <laughs> the thing is that, you know, people will will get distracted by it. And quite rightly, it's what happens. People, while we're talking, people will be like, what's that in the background? How the fuck did they not know who that was? <laughs> yeah, I don't, like that. Is, don't know. Um, but, um... Yeah, so, three, yeah, three, three piece. piece. Yeah. No, no, yeah. It's, it's just always worked. If, if if the right guy came along, who you know on guitar, we'd be like, all right, that's cool. But the right guy came along yeah. and be prepared, to, be prepared to make a commitment. Exactly. <laughs> well, we, we've only ever had the same guys in the bands. We haven't. Ah, right. Okay. We've, it's just you know. Free. And it is only Southampton as well, isn't it? It's not like you've kind of like got guitarists fucking. No, no we, we live like two minutes away from each other. Yeah. Pain in the ass. No, but that's great. That's what makes a band's work, band works. I mean, the whole new acid rain thing. We're spread all over the country, and it's it's fucking. You know, yeah, it's, the logistics are horrendous. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, well, I've got to put two of the sweaty bastards up. Sorry, three. I've got to put three of them up in my flat for like two or three days just to rehearse. Yeah, that's and a lot. And they've got to travel out. from Wales, Devon, and Newcastle. You know, Newcastle. Yeah, I like Newcastle. Uh, I know, I know. We well, allowed in Newcastle. But um, hey, my mum's from Newcastle. Is she really? Yeah, why I man? Yeah, with some stoic kit, man. We we I man. <laughs> we yeah, we we I. Um, so um, so yeah, being all close together like that—that's yeah. that's that's a fucking godsend, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it just kind of happens, you know. Yeah, we all live in the centre as well. Southampton's quite a big place, but you got the centre. No, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it, it, no, it is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big like town. The, it's a city. It's got a cathedral. Yeah, but I think we're now we live now we live in the age of separation of church and state, and also. <laughs> 
And also in an age where we're not fuckwits, <laughs> we shouldn't be we shouldn't be calling big town cities because some bunch of fucking monks. It's got built a, it's a got Nando's. That's a city. It's got a Nando's. Yeah, it's a city. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna fuck with your logic there, mate. Seriously, somebody up north, a mate of mine lives up north. He goes, "Oh, mate, um, we just got a Nando's. Have you ever had one?" Fucking hell, dude. It's like One an up, step up from KFC. Yeah, so I was about to say, upmarket KFC. Yeah, basically, it's chav cuisine. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nando's. Chav yeah, cuisine. One of my favourite things about London is you can get free hot wings for a quid. Really? Yep, Where? across the road. I'll tell you. I treat you to a. Take me I, I treat you some hot wings. <laughs> hey, they do. Treat you some hard loving. No, I'll treat you some hot wings. <laughs> they do repeat on you. Really? Yeah. You well, what I gather, well, in that case, that is fucking. They repeat on you. Surely isn't that uh, twice the value? Uh, no, because it's the way it repeats on you. The other ends. Oh, which is constantly shitting. Yeah, but it's yeah, like. Yeah, but I like having a like dump. When you, get to my age, when you get to my age, mate, having a fucking dump, right, is very close to having an orgasm. <laughs> it really is. That first coffee inspired well, fucking I've shit had, in the morning. I've had three today. Is orgasmic. I've You've had three. Yeah. Three shits. I've got a high metabolism. Have you got high metabolism or are you just bricking it about uh, going on stage tonight? Well, actually, tonight was one of the only gigs that I've actually felt a bit nervous. Because it's a big gig, you know. Turns out it wasn't. No. <laughs> and there's a disgustingly low turnout, has to be said. It's all right. I mean, we've we played in front of worse. we played in front of a sound yes, guy. Yeah, and his I know, yeah, I know, but you're, you're, you're fucking supporting absolute legends here. I mean, yeah. Michael was just talking earlier about how he, how he and Jason Newstead co-wrote two songs for the last album, in it at Jason's house. Do you know what I mean? That, that's how close. Just casually that, went that, over. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I, I didn't want to get all dribbly and start going. You fucking what? Oh, what's he like? What's he doing? That's, that's what's his favourite colour? What's his hair smell like? Where does he live? <laughs> Has he got a car? Does he prefer bikes? Does he <laughs> like trees? That's probably why they closed off the other bar. Say the ticket sales are quite low. Yeah, hey, definitely. Um, I, 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 yeah, yeah, well, criminal. Absolutely criminally low. It's Monday night. Yeah, it's Monday night. I'm happy but, there are people there for but, us. This is what Except does my for head age in. from acid rain. Well, there you go, yeah. But this is what does my head in about the modern gig goer or lack of goer tonight. London is spoiled, just... though. They get gigs yeah, really? all the time. London spoiled? Yeah. All right, have a guess at last time Flotsam and Jetsam played London. What? Well, well, I mean, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Yeah? Yeah? You'd have been around s- two. So is it 1990? Yeah. <laughs> Well, like London, there's a lot of. By the way, gigs. awesome yeah. maths. Hey, eh? awesome maths. You're 27. Yeah, yeah. And it would have been when you were seven, and you were just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, London is spoiled, not for Flossum Jetson, but for metal gigs. Yeah, there's metal gigs all the time. No, 25 years ago is what I said. So 92. Was it? No, 27 years. It's two pounds. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Fucking hell, I can't. I'm absolutely one, one no too many lime and sodas. One too many lime and sodas. Uh, actually, I think I've had an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just Are you having a stroke? I'm still fucking rocking yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> um, but, um. Yeah, it's just. A, no, it's just a really shitty turn. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, London's spoiled and all that. It's fucking flotsam and jetsam. Oh, yeah. oh, it just depresses me. It does, but. Then again, they they weren't that big back in the day. Um, no, they were one of those sort of latecomers. Well, it, well, it, no, they were there at the very beginning. Um, the, the problem is that, um, I mean, I was talking to uh, Michael earlier. I have referenced that, obviously, again. Yeah, we um, know. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Best you're his mate. Best right. buds, yeah, <laughs> I know. We're mates on Facebook now as well. So oh, far. brilliant. Yeah, I know. I'm going to defriend you to make room for him. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's I, I feel with lots they kind of fell between two stools. They were like they weren't thrashy enough for thrashers, and they weren't and they were too thrashy for mainstreamers. Yeah, because you think you think of lots of yes, you think the the like albums like Coatro and things like that was just like it's it's just such high class, high quality metal. It's it, I mean it really is fucking it is like Queensrÿche except that much that bit heavier, that yeah. bit cooler. But, it, but you know, yeah, it's too heavy for Queensryche fans. And with Eric's vocals, as amazing as they are, um, they're kind of not thrashy enough for thrash. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I just think their, their career, whole career, they've just suffered a little bit. Just that falling yeah, I see between, what you mean. Yeah. between the gaps. And I, I really hope... Uh, well, I don't know. That's the only way I, I personally can explain why they're not fucking massive. 
but you know. Well, tonight it's, it's still early. London gigs takes a while for people to fill it through. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah. You are an optimist, aren't you? Very. Because uh, I, I, I think that's it. I think that, oh, yeah. that's as many people are going to turn up. Really. Nice too short to be negative. You know? Oh, I totally agree. I totally <laughs> agree. No, I'm absent. Hey. If I, if I was never a negative person, believe you and me, the Ezra Rain reunion would not be happening. Did I call it a reunion? Oops. Oh, Reboot. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So let, let's talk about the first time we met, because that was... Um, oh, that was the Gamma Bomb. Was it Gamma Bomb? Was it Gamma Bomb? Yeah, because you came out of Visceral Attack and did Nuclear Assault. Oh. And me and Sam were like, oh my god, it's fucking H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, that was you two at the front. Yeah, go oh, mad, yeah. <laughs> oh, god. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I it, it, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Nuclear War by Nuclear Assault? Yeah, I think so. Oh, and well, no, wasn't it? Um, do you know how weird that dun, is? Dun, 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 dun. No, um, oh, another, another oil survived. spill. Da, 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 survived, that's it. Yeah, oh, you fucking yeah, say it. Well, I, yeah, I know. But you know, there you go. No, John Connolly. Yeah, that was it. Um, yeah. But um, would you realise I was there that night to interview Gamma Bomb mm. for the second ever podcast? Really? Yeah. Um, and 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 now here we are. I think this is this will be the 18th. I think. Yeah. Or something like that. There's a couple of extras in there as well. He says going yeah, nodding like you fucking listen. I've listened to a few, but they're really long. Oh, you complaining? Are you? <laughs> I get complaints. They're too short. What? I know. If I if I had a stable like internet connection at work, I listen to it at work, but I don't. And two hours, one and a half hours is a lot of data. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I know I, I, I absolutely completely agree. Um, and um, can you download them? Is there a have you, what, what phone have you got? Okay, this is where this is gets really interesting. This is thrash metal interview and a half. This one. Oh right, okay. We'll just get. Have you got a podcast app? Uh, no, I can get one though, right? Yeah, just go to the yeah. store, get a podcast app. And this is uh, this is all you listening as well. In case you haven't got one, get a podcast app like I've got on mine. Oh, right? phone's off here. Yeah. And um, and then you just search, um, search talking bollocks in there, right? It pops up, and then um, favorited it. Is this your advert here? Yeah, it's, <laughs> and, and this is for everybody listening as well. Do you want to start over? You get your phone out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is what you do, right? You press podcast, right? There your app opens. And it's not opening. There we go. Opens up, right? Put Talking Bollocks in there. There it is. Yeah. And there are all the episodes. And all you do is... You can, da- can you download them? Download them. Ah. Right. And you download okay. them to your phone. So you do, that over, you do that over Wi-Fi. Yeah, I can do that. That's, that's no problem. Right, so I'm 45 and you're 27. I've got an excuse for not knowing that basic shit. Right, the very basics. Well, because I always thought any any of phones and apps, any of the apps, you would just stream it. Oh no, you, you'll probably have you'll probably have a native you'll, you'll have a native podcast app. I'm using terms you don't understand now, aren't I? No, you a sound native... like a phone salesman. Now, right, okay, yeah. okay. Well, uh, anyway, <laughs> sir, this um, this uh, HTC that you've got here, yeah, this is this has a um, a native <laughs> podcast app baked into the operating baked. system. Baked. Yeah. That tends to be the phrase. Yeah. Oh, right. Gas Mark Five. You get home, put that in the microwave for two or three minutes, and uh, you'll be fucked. But um, yeah, there'll be a pod. That you look for a podcast app. Okay. And if you can't find one there, you want Pod Kicker because it's an Android phone, which is free, <laughs> right? And then you just and then you can put in talking bollocks. You download. You download them, mate. Download them. So there we go. That was the how to. Um, Download the weird thing is you should print the weird, them thing, on, no, yeah. the weird thing is people might be listening to this going that oh, Jamie from, yeah. that Jamie from Desolator what a top bloke <laughs> if he if he hadn't if he hadn't not known how to do that it's going to be people listening going really <laughs> you can do that you yeah. don't have to just stream them listen, listen to the man he knows yeah, I don't have to listen to this on YouTube no get fucking off YouTube Google load it cunts <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah anyway yeah. going back so we were plus yeah, and jess them. Um, no, not Flossum and Jessen. Um, Gamma Bomb. That's oh, the first yeah, time yeah, we met. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time we met. And was that... You were with... Is it the bass player from your band? No, it's uh, Sam. The, uh, no, yeah, no, we're all there. We're all there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of other guys who we were uh, met up with as well. But yeah, we all travel Right, up. well, one of his... Really? Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm mouth. This, this, this is terrible. I'm now doing what's so, even, Does he know? I'm not. No, shut up. I'm not, I'm not. I'm now doing 
it's even worse than I've been known to do on the podcast, which is like say, oh no, I can't do that, or or tell people the awesome stories that I can't tell you that were said off the record. Instead, I'm just like mouthing things. Oh, to you. right. Okay. So I should probably stop doing that. Okay, all right. <laughs> I do apologise. Um, so anyway, look, well, um, obviously you're aware we played some Desolator on the podcast. I bet you yep. listened to that episode, didn't you? I certainly yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, of oh, course yeah. I did. Oh, yeah, the, the internet connection at work <laughs> <laughs> managed to just be stable enough that day, didn't no, it? I, I, was at, I was at home that day, so... Yeah. Oh, I used a lot of data that day. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I had some um, had some really good feedback on that. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. That's you, surprising. Don't, don't, sound, don't sound so surprised. <laughs> You know, we had some really good feedback on That's that. That's cool. And, um, uh, and, and so what are the plans? What are the plans? Cool sweatband, by the way. Oh, Desolate, cheers. Desolate, yeah, there's, Desolate sweatband. there's only six of these in existence. Really? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. Exclusive. Yeah. So you're not going to be selling them then? No. Right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, go to the Desolate uh, website that they don't have and do. don't buy. Oh, you it's, do? it's about two years out of date. Oh, it's two years out of date and you can't get Desolate sweatbands. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a hell of a band you're running yeah, here. Yeah, well, we've, we, you know, we've, we've got a Facebook page. True. That's that's all you need, isn't it? That's all you need. Yeah. Well, oh, we, thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thank no, you. We, we've we, you know we've got the merch pages and things. Yeah. And people can follow us, and um, if they're interested, see what we're doing on Facebook. That's it. <laughs> you're, you're giving it a hard sell. Followers, <laughs> if, if if you're interested. Well, you know, I just if you're not, I don't. You know, this modern stuff. I'm, nah. I just people rely on it too much. Yeah. A fair you point. Know. Yeah. Whenever we ask people to play, you know. If, when we're playing if they want to come to shows we actually like talk to them like people yeah but you know, that's not going to get you like many people to your shows is it I know you know right, you well, are going to reach more people on Facebook well, than walking around Southampton well to that's the right now Facebook back in the day no but we had a record label <laughs> <laughs> I think you've um, we didn't just walk around Harrogate and manage to muster up enough people for us to get signed <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we, we, we yes, we, we we mounted we mounted a um, we mounted a, street, a letter campaign. <laughs> oh, ob- obviously, we, we we use the internet, but we don't. It's not our sole avenue. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. sounds spooky. Car boot fairs, uh, <laughs> eBay. I don't know. What are oh, you using? I, I think the the best way to spread the word is by playing shows. You know, it's, it's yeah, like, well, yeah, old it's, school. It's like every, every time we play a show, we have seen new faces. It's like yes, brilliant. That's what we want. Awesome, right? And how many shows do you play in a year, do you reckon? About 20 to 30? Yeah. No, um, we've done over 100 already, and that's in four years, in April, last April. So that's about 25 a year. Yeah, yeah right. so the well, first year we did loads. So I think we did about 30 or 40. And then the second year was quite a lot, but the third year we were a bit more, a bit more picky about where we were playing because we wanted to write more stuff. Then, Speaking of which, what's what's the next what's the next step? As oh, we go, yeah, as we're writing this, we're writing this fucking brilliant song at the moment. Uh, no, not just song. Oh, I mean, right. you know, have you got a collection of songs? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've written a song. <laughs> well, that's, my, that's my line. We're the ones who are bringing out one song. Well, we, we it takes us ages to write a song because we if it's not good, we we just scrap it. So we, whenever we're writing something, it's got to be that we're, if we're playing it, we're like, fuck yeah! And it's like, yeah, that'll stay. If we're playing the song, it's like, ah, nah, fuck it, we'll, you know, start again. So it takes yeah. us ages to write stuff because we all have to be like 100% happy with it. So but, what's what's the plans? Is, is there any kind of release coming, demos? Well, I, I reckon the, the next release, we're sort of right, we're probably almost about halfway there now. We're going to do an album. How many songs you got? Eight. Well, we, well we're planning on doing eight. On an album? Yeah, because we did ten the first one. But the first hour, it's like that's a song you've got, songs you've got at that point. But now we're actually sort of writing, right? More, yeah, yeah. You know, yes. Yeah, because yeah. throughout your when you start, you've got yeah. You, you suddenly go, we've years. got enough songs yeah, to, to do an album. An album. But yeah. now we're now we're because we're, we're, we're now you're actually experiencing yeah, writing an album. Yeah, we think we want to write the next songs we're writing. Is it, they're going to be on the album? We don't just want to write any old pitch and then be like, oh, pick the best ones. Yeah. yeah it's... Oh but, no! You, you, in other words, you don't want to overwrite and then pick from. Yeah, it's just. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in it. Do I don't know. I, I don't ever. I mean, any anything I've ever done is you write to spec. You know, yeah. it's like right, we're going in with eight songs, we're going in with nine songs. Everybody knows those songs inside out. They've been rehearsed, they've been pre-produced, they've been demoed, they've been well, pulled apart, put together, you, and you, that's you, that. You'd hope so. <laughs> that's that. You know, it's a finished <laughs> album. But this, yeah, no, this is like oh yeah, we're going to write. We're gonna write twenty, 30, record, yeah, 20 30 and, songs. And, yeah, and, and we'll pick twelve. Really? Really? How bad are those other songs? Well, funnily enough, I spoke to um, I spoke to Carl Agel from King Hitter, and um, 
because he's a, he's a singer but he also writes the lyrics as, as I do and he's like yeah yeah we're going to write about 20 and I was like bro fucking how the hell do you do that I was like also I get attached to my lyrics how can you just suddenly fucking nix yeah, like it's just, eight it's like, fucking it's, songs yeah, what yeah, about if, those if, little eight sets of lyrics yeah, you've got running around well as a, as a band if, if you you spend hours writing riffs and, and music and sections you just think oh fuck it this, just scrap it oh, there are times when you, you write sections and think yeah it's just not going to work then you just sort of build it you might use it a bit later or I don't know when we did our first album we when we were in the studio we'd only had seven written and we wrote three more whilst we were in the studio right okay and there are the ones we wrote are our favourite songs we played out <laughs> well I, yeah I mean it's, it's an expensive way to do it right in the yeah, studio yeah <laughs> big time um, but you know if you can if you can pull that off then yeah, yeah. why not well, we had um, like but, cause we, we, we didn't write it in the studio we whilst we were recording we were still writing them. yeah so we, we had like practice and stuff in our own places yeah. and then sort of brought that into the studio you, know, you can't write on a studio time oh my god no way <laughs> but yeah we're, so, we're writing more stuff you know as it should be but it takes us a while since the last release we've written two songs and that was August last year so we've written two songs on the way yeah, to but the third to be fair one. August last year that's not, that's not bad and not we, we play a lot of gigs that's the thing we're always so when, when's your shows. next show? Um, back for the weekend the 1st of June not 1st of June 1st weekend of June 6th of June in Hastings oh, that's a shame because I won't be able to plug it because the next <laughs> the next podcast will be coming out middle of June But then, well, that, so yeah. after June yeah after we're going on tour in yeah. Europe Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we've already got a few. Uh, so how geeks. did that? How did that come about? Well, there's this uh, agency called Roadmaster. Yeah. And they, they do the proper good fresh tours in Europe. And I first got in contact with them because they were putting on the Violator gig. Right. And I was like saying, if you do an England gig, can we play? And then you know they never played England. Yeah, don't blame them. But it's. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey. Faith no more. Oh, sorry. Really? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Hang your head in shame. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. So Roadmaster and um, they they were sort of in, in keeping in contact because uh, there was a German band Reset and they were doing their European tour and yeah. I put them on a few shows and Roadmaster sent me over their details, you know, just for the booking thing and everything. And so we we're in contact and then a couple of months, uh, beginning of the year, they were like. We're sorting out this tour in Europe. Do you want to play? Yeah. And we were like, fuck yeah. So that's how it happens. And the tour was announced a couple of weeks ago, last month or something. It's but awesome. That, yeah, that, now, we, now we're getting some of the gigs confirmed. Cause it's like, so here's, what, so here's what cities tour. are you playing? Do you know? Huh? What cities are you playing? Oh, well, we've got a few confirmed. Um, the first one's in Paris. Yeah, Paris. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be crazy. I can't imagine playing in France. No? Um, but that's the first one. We've got some more confirmed. Um, we've got Bordeaux. There's Tilburg and Netherlands. Oh, hang on. Tilburg? Yeah. Are you playing the Nordelite? No, uh, Little Devil. Oh, right, okay. No, Nordelite's fucking huge. Uh, awesome. Rostock in Germany. Nice, yeah, yeah. Of course. Cool. Some warm ups, some festival. But that, those are the ones we've got confirmed. So, um, yeah, French, German, and. Yeah, so the, yeah. yeah, the idea is going France, Spain. Holland. Spain. Yeah, um, all of those countries full of people who listen to this podcast. Brilliant. Oh yeah. I mean, you've you probably just sold the tour out by just, just yeah. mentioning it even, now. Even the gigs aren't confirmed are sold out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. People are buying tickets for the shows Italy, that haven't been made yet. Italy's going to be cool. Austria. Italy would be cool because of the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Germany. Uh, and in in Italy. Never yeah. Been. Make sure prunes for breakfast. Oh no. No, seriously. Really? Yeah. Yeah. If you're eating pasta and pizza all day, mate, you need to eat prunes for breakfast. <laughs> Otherwise, you ain't gonna shit for a week. You're gonna be carrying that sh- that that around in your in your ass. Oh no! On tour. Well, then we, with the van we've got, it's got a microwave and a fridge. It's got what? A microwave and a fridge. A microwave and a fridge. If you go if you go into Italy and they see you've got a microwave in there, they'll drag it into the street and smash it to bits. Really? Hey, mate. Well, we they, just, they take their cooking pretty fucking seriously. We just out won't there. let them in the van. Honestly, yeah, they, will drag it. They, will, well. they, they will they will drag that microwave out of your van and beat it in the street like an American cop with a black protester. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. That's Howard getting sued, sued by the New York Police <laughs> Department. I don't know why it'd be the New York Police Department, but there you go. I don't know. Uh, 
I, I, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. No. That was an awesome Faith No More song. It's great to hear that again. Anyway, um, I'm just hoping I don't have to pay any royalties out for this shit in the background. <laughs> so, uh, European tour, that is fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we've done, we played uh, Belgium, Netherlands. Uh, we did Germany this year as well. And it's a real deal. Yeah. It is. The, the way they treat bands over there oh yeah is oh it's oh it's brilliant isn't it the minute you get oh, the minute you get into Europe you just they I remember the first time we went to Europe we, we got shown into a dressing room and you, oh, this is um, we're not sure if this is for you or not we'll come back and let you know and the fridge was full of beer so we emptied the fridge yeah and snuck it onto the tour bus <laughs> and then we all went back and stood in there and they came back and they went yes this is your dressing room <laughs> we were like, and we were like there's no beer in here right like. so we've just We've just robbed our own dressing room. <laughs> but it was fucking good. We couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, well, we literally like, well, we shouldn't be in here. You know. Well, we were um, the last. Uh, we, we played Germany in March. We were invited over by this uh, this band, Messerschmitt. Right. You know. Messerschmitt. <laughs> fucking hell, they like re- they like reminding themselves of coming <laughs> second, don't they? Well, they, 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 uh, they well, did, did you change your name to Spitfire for the? Um, I, I was. I, I, I did. I, 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 I did say that. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I don't think it would have gone down that too well. You know, yeah, um, you know, down like a Messerschmitt into the British. Into the. You know, uh, I made it in Oasis High with the intro to Oasis yeah. High. Where should you open with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should have opened with the Churchill speech. Well, yeah, because that's how. Well, you, well, I they, like, that's how. That's how you open it. You know. Of course, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant like literally. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and then we went there and invited us. So it was really cool. Playing Germany has been a dream of ours for probably since we started, really. Yeah. And yeah, so the treatment over there, like, had a choice of food. You know, it was. Yeah, not just fuck off. There isn't any. Yeah, and we had the beer. There was. It was just really, and this venue was crazy because you could sleep there. Wow. And it, and it had bathroom. It had three bathrooms. And you have, and you have many people in. Yeah, well, we were third on, third or fourth on, I can't remember. And there was probably about 100 people there. That is fucking more than there is tonight. Yeah, yeah well, it, was, it was just really cool, and we proper embraced it. We stayed, we were at one gig, we stayed there for three nights. Yeah. Awesome. And just saw a bit of Germany, and... Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Whenever we do any gig, we always try to make the most of it. It's not just yeah. playing, it's not the 30 minutes on stage, it's the day before and the day after, and... That was yeah. in that was in a little town sort of in between Cologne and Dusseldorf. I'm trying to think what that um That's Munch and Gladbach. No? It's like western That's the only town I know. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's near Dusseldorf. It's, it's western Germany and it's it's kind of close to Netherlands. It's quite close to the border. It's Oh, really, awesome, really, really nice towns. And well, look, Jamie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, we're going to go see Flossum Jetsam. We're going to go and see Flossum yeah. Jetsam. Yeah. So, um, thank you very much. Let's go That's see no Flossum. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Well, there's a, there a sort of a young one's quality about that interview, certainly about the way about the way it ended. Quick, let's go. Quick, run. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it. Uh, uh, like I said, that was that, that was um, that was the two of us having a laugh, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, we um, uh, you heard it. Um, uh, I um, yeah, and I missed Desolator's set as well. I've had him on before. Um, uh, I've obviously played Desolator on the um, on on the podcast before, and um, uh, yeah, I'm 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 a fan. So um, and I know there's quite a few of you out there who are as well because I've um, I, I've heard you say that you're a fan. Um, so uh, yeah, it was cool to have him on. Um, I, I hope the uh, I hope the sound was all right. It it, it seemed okay, um, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I'm also going to be posting a picture on the Talking Bollocks page. I'll probably tweet it out. Any of you who've got Handle with Care, um, the Nuclear Assault album. On, uh, on vinyl, I'm going to ruin it for you. Oh, actually, all the CD. I'm going to ruin it for you because there's a um, the the collage of the album has got a little picture of me on it, just my little face. Um, so I'm going to po- I'm going to post that up for you, and um, uh, yeah, you can have um, you can have a lovely time. You can you just just picking me out. It's uh, so it'll basically it ruined that album for you. Um, the, uh, anyway, the um, the the other thing I wanted to mention um, was about another another uh, music festival. Um, well, actually, not a music festival. It was something that was... Um, it's the, the Rockstar Energy Drink Mayhem Festival. And uh, there, the main man behind it is called John Reese, And he was in, um, he was in the press um, this uh, last couple of weeks. And basically, he said... Um, 
Um, uh, he said uh, he wanted to try and get Pantera um, on the festival. And he said, well, di did he mean with Zach Wilde playing, uh, playing with them? Well, this is his quote. Um, well, with somebody on guitar, yet yeah, no shit. You'd probably need a guitarist in Pantera, you fucking idiot. Um, well, with someone on guitar, I think that, ho that hopefully it happens. I think the fans deserve it. And who knows what the three minute remaining guys have to say. But I think it would be badass to see Pantera out there. A, you're a fucking promoter. So don't give me all it badass fans and all that shit. You just want to fucking make a load of money. You want to sell a load of fucking tickets. Two, could you be more disrespectful to fucking Dime and Zach Wilde for that matter? Um, well, with someone on guitar, yeah, because just anybody could replace Dime, you fucking dick. And finally, and finally, the other thing, I've, problem I've got this is, I think the fans deserve it. Really? Do you know each, each individual Pantera fan, do you? I'm pretty sure there's some Pantera fans who are fucking lazy cunts, who sit around and do nothing, and deserve fuck all. And couldn't even be asked to go and see Pantera when they were playing their fucking town when Dime was in the band. I, I, oh, the fans deserve it. Yeah, look, let's just get this straight. Look, and, and, and I'm not trying to claim you because I'm in a band, I know everything. I'm not. But let's get this straight, okay? You don't do anything for the fans. I hate to burst your bubble here, okay? But you don't do anything for the fans. You do it for yourself. That's the way bands work. It's about being selfish. You do what you think is cool, what you think is right, what you think sounds good, and then you put it out there. If people like it, then that's great. But the minute that the bands start doing things for the fans on purpose like oh let write an album for the fans or do no that's when it's all gone shit that's when it's all gone tits up that's when it's all lost right it's not about fucking doing anything for the fans you do it for you and the simple fact is you've got three guys at two who still haven't who haven't spoken for years and this fucking dick thinks that that somehow he seems to you know he's oh well, i i put an offer out there you put an offer out there who to who the fuck to did you nip down the graveyard and make diamond offer did you you fucking dick hey and it, it's just you know, the fans deserve it fuck that fuck that no one's gone out there and you know, you, I, that's just such a fucking overused phrase oh do it for the fans oh the fans did no 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 uh, there's people do not deserve things because they've bought a few albums over the years that does that does not entail earning anything you haven't deserved anything and like i said th there's three guys there who, who haven't spoken i make it okay so phil and rex speak but uh, but vinnie doesn't speak to them at all for his own reasons and that's you know m maybe that shit will one day be water under the bridge maybe they won't will they what one will they maybe maybe one day they will that's what i want to fucking say Maybe one day they will talk, but until then, it's no one's business but their own. And it fucking fucks me off like that. Oh, get nuclear results in the UK. Bullshit fucking group on Facebook when they already are playing the UK. You just got to get off your ass and go and see them. It's all this like, oh, get Pantera together. Get... Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because these guys haven't spoken. There's deep rooted animosity in their relationships with each other. But do you know what? The one thing that will heal those wounds, those deep, those deep emotional, torrid wounds. You know what will heal that? Oh, a big old Facebook group with some likes. You fucking self-obsessed gunts! Jesus Christ, it fucking winds me up. It's the, the, that, that self-obsession. And actually, that dials into what I was saying earlier as well about like people actually thinking that facial recognition and stuff like that is a good idea. Because it might, it, might, it might mean that my tent won't get nicked. Oh yeah, really? Because it's all about you, isn't it? Yeah, 80,000 people should have their faces scanned and kept into a database because it might save you having your fucking tent stolen. Well, let's get one thing straight. You've signed up to paying through the fucking nose hundreds of pounds to be treated like a dickhead consumer and even pay to have your fucking phone charged and live in a little cloth village on a fucking hillside. Yeah, if it gets nicked, it gets nicked. Tough fucking shit. If you want security, get a fucking hotel room. If you can't afford one, tough shit. Then don't take anything with you that you don't want to lose because that's the golden rule of fucking festivals. And don't expect the police... What do you want? Government and police approved festivals. Is that where we're going now, is it? 
Oh, yes, I want facial recognition. Yeah, and I want millions and millions of security. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be like going to something... It'd be like, like a cross between a music festival and a fucking... Um, Oh, fucking, what's the word? <laughs> um, a, a music festival and a police conference, yeah. Just merge the two, because that's when you know you're rocking, innit? That's when you know you're really out there. That's when you know you're having a fucking great time, when you've got 50 fucking police around you and CCTV everywhere. That's when you know you're at the centre of something really fucking special. Is it fuck? <sighs> yeah, that was one, wasn't it? That was one for the books. <laughs> oh, I covered a few things there. I've been sitting on my chest. Um, fucking, I'm going to have a massive wank after this. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I coughed. So what? You want to fucking not hear coughs? Go and listen to another fucking podcast. And now I'm drinking. Uh, anyway, uh, it's just water. I'm not completely, you know. No, I, it's fucking Cavazier, man. It's water, and I've got a box of Rose's chocolates next to me for a treat as well. Um, that was meant to be Alan Partridge, so fuck you if you were going to have a go. Anyway, um, finally, um, this is the final pocket. Now, this is a bit of a rare one, because it's not just me doing the, doing the interview. Um, um, there is um, my, I say, I hate it. When people in bands, especially singers, go like, yeah, my bass, well, he's my bass player and he's my guitarist or guitarist go, yeah, my singer. I hate it when they, u when they use that term that makes it sound like they own some, they own someone else. It, it, it's bullshit. So the bass player in Acid Rain, Pete, Pete D of Cremated, check them out, UK thrash band, Cremated, spelt with a K. Um, uh, he basically is a mate with, of Dan, um, uh, Dan Mongrain from uh, Voivod. Chewy, as he's otherwise known. And um, uh, I wasn't able to get vo an interview with Voivod, but um, Dan was staying in London for a few days after the tour and after festivals and stuff. And um, Pete managed to sort out um, an interview. How fucking cool is that? Thank you, Pete. Um, it's it's a great chat. We met up um, in the, funnily enough, in the World's End pub again. So we just left that to go and see Flotsam and Jetsam. Uh, um, and um, uh, me and Jamie went off there. And then, uh, you know, a couple of days later, um, or a couple of weeks later, I was back there. Um, met up with Dan, me, Dan and Pete had a, had, a, had a drink, had a bit of a chat. Uh, and then we went to a Cuban uh, bar that Pete had found, which is nice and quiet. And we sat down and we had a lovely um, hour conversation that you're going to listen to now. Um, it was really cool. We cover all sorts of bits and pieces. And um, I hope you enjoy it. So this is myself, Howard H. Smith, Pete D. And Dan Chewy Mongrain from... Uh, I hope I'm, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Chewy Mongrain sounds like sounds like an insult. I'm sorry, Dan, if you are listening to this, because uh, there may be a chance that you are. Um, that... <laughs> You fucking chewy mongrain! I hope I've got I hope I've got his uh, his name right. In fact, um, I, look, uh, yeah, as usual, um, I'm doing my um, I, I'm doing my uh, uh, my research on the fly, and um, yay, cool, yes. So it is Tan Mongrain or Chewy Mongrain, which is uh, which is uh, yeah. Okay, I, I, I'll just get on with it. This is us. This is the interview. Fucking hell! What a crap! What a fucking Awful fucking intro that is. Only the crowbar really, and that's the crowbar. Yeah, I went there yesterday. Not, yeah, it's not nice. It's not nice. People are getting stupid very fast there, huh? Like they go back <laughs> in the toilet and, uh, and they. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, um, it's not nice. That's uh, the start of the interview. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the first thing we're gonna have on there. Yeah. Uh, Chewie's drunk confessional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was really caught. I was talking about. I was talking about. I was talking about. I was talking about. I was really good. I went on. So it was great. I went on. I'm dead. Yeah. Um, so uh, so uh, yeah. I, I, I just ignore that. We'll just carry on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. That is awesome whiskey. What is it? La Frog. La Frog. La Frog. Oh God! Yes. Yeah, that's just, no. I just reminded him like, why I don't like whiskey. You don't whiskey. drink anymore. <laughs> um, well, not today. Okay. <laughs> no, no. I normally, um, I do normally drink. But, okay. um, He's a designated driver. Yeah, I am the designated yeah. driver. But um, yeah, such is life. That music is a bit of a pain, isn't it? Should we see if we can get to turn it down? There's nobody in. I'm sure he's gonna turn it down. Yeah, true. 
See what he says. See what he says. Right, well, pigs away. <laughs> See, I, it's getting, we, we've, we've done the whole sort of like tourism. You've done the whole tourism thing. Yeah. Well. Is that the first time you've done it? Uh, in London, yes. Right. I've been here, uh, maybe it's my fourth time in London, but we played the garage twice and uh, the exchange, I think. Exchange? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't recognize that. Thanks. And the, the underworld, but uh, we don't have much time to visit around uh, on tour, so. Uh... Yeah, no, no, it, it, it's it's kind of like, well. There we go, let's get some levels hey, on the go. Hey, hey, one, two. <laughs> yeah, great, we do sound check, yeah. On your day off, sound check yeah. on your day off, great. So, yeah, we, we've been uh, taking the tube and. And, 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 and finding love. Yeah, <laughs> finding love. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll just brush over that. Um, I mean, love in the city, of buildings course. and everything. Yeah, of course, like did the monument and you know the the, the Tower Bridge and the, the Westminster yeah. Bridge. And did you the Big see? Ben did you see? Oh, you saw Big Ben. Oh yeah, yeah. Weird, isn't it? it yeah, when you see it for, for real, when you see it for real, it's, it's kind, of, kind of impressive. Actually. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I like the uh, Abbey, Abbey, Abbey. Yeah. How do you call it? Um, Abbey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abbey. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that's the right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, this is too, uh, way more old, I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. And uh, I think the buildings got kind of a vibration when they're huge like that. When we were in Barcelona, I, I went to the Sagrada Familia for the th third time, and it's the same effect every time. You know, when yeah. the, the things are huge and old, uh, not that much old, but you know. Uh, yeah, I, it definitely have uh, an effect. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm your... I'm not I'm not a religious guy, but I I've been to I've been to Duomo in um, yeah in I, Milan. I've been there too uh, on this tour, and I go every time. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, you, uh, do you go right up right up onto the roof? No, I didn't oh, go I, in. No, no, no. I mean, on the roof, you can get the lift on the outside, and you can oh, go and, and you can stand on and you can stand on. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if, you, no. if you do it on a Sunday morning, um, you uh, go up. Onto the roof, okay. and it's all flat up there, really? and, it, and yeah, and it's all young couples. It's like a sort of, um, sort of like a, an Italian sort of rite of passage for ah. young couples. And when you go up there, in I'm, I'm usually well, whenever I was there, it's sort of January, February time. And when you're on the roof, you can see the, the whole uh, city. You see the whole city, but you can wow. see the mountains as well. You really? see all snow-capped mountains. Ah, I missed that. And when you're on the roof of Duomo, you can see the other cathedral. Which is the San Siro, yeah. <laughs> where, with, with like where, where all the football is. Um, but that's amazing. Mm. Being on the roof of that is absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. it really is. But inside, there is, was a yeah. big, big show, a television show. They were setting up for a, an event. I don't know what, but I'm sure the everything was kind of uh, closed. Oh right, uh, okay. Around the, the cathedral, but, yeah, um, it was pretty. Uh, Pretty cool to, to see it anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. But it's still, you want to get inside as well, don't you? Yeah. Have a good look around. Yeah. Uh, well, next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We well, yeah, you've got to that to look forward to because it is yeah. amazing. It really is. It's gorgeous. And um, your trip up, um, your trip to see the the Inuit people, I and mean, kind of was, uh, that you yeah. mentioned that that's that is really. Was it? Did the whole band go? No, I was there with a female singer, pop singer. Oh uh, right. Yeah. And a drummer, and we played as a trio, no bass, just guitar, yeah. guitar, drums, and, Fuck and bass players. Man. Yeah, <laughs> they're always late anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah coming in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was not with Voivod, but uh, at the same time, we uh, we have a uh, song on the latest Voivod album called Kluskap Okom, which is a Micmac word and legend, and it's about. Uh, any any uh, uh, native? A, can I say native? Yeah, it's yeah. not pejorative. No, 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 okay, not at all. Native no. people from anywhere in the in the world. Right. It's always the same story. Yeah? They they get uh, co cornered in a in a small part, and uh, everybody forget about them. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's a sad story all the time. Yeah, it's the in indigenous people always. They're, they're always the first casualties of, yeah. uh, of progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah. They, they knew how 
you know, they were very close to nature and plants and, you know, old medicine, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, very aware of the cycles in, in, the, in the, you know, the stars and uh, just the, the seasons. And, uh, and they were respectful of the environment where they lived because they, it was a survival thing. Yeah. And uh, we kind of all forgot about that, you know, uh, with our, our iPhones and computers. And, you know, yeah. we're really disconnected even though we are connected more than ever. Yeah. Uh, so it's fun to... But more than we are connected. Yeah, we are connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, on, on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> He's a I company man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so what, was that, what was that name we came up with for the, for the next Voivod album? Oh, Humilitron. Humi yeah. Humilitron. Humilitron. Yeah. You heard it here, folks. Humilitron, that's definitely good. That's, uh, <laughs> You could, that, that's got to be that's got to be an album or a song yeah. or something in there definitely. Um, so, but you've got to you've got to love travel though. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's just seeing the world is. And and for me to be to be part of Voivod, uh, I was are you are you in Voivod? <laughs> no, <laughs> he just said we were meeting some French guy. <laughs> Oi. Next you'll be saying he's not French. <laughs> Oi. I'm, not, I'm Quebecois. Quebecois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah mean, no. So, I, yeah, sorry. I, 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 I mean, to be oh, in oh. that band first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've been a fan since I'm 11 years old, and I wasn't. I was not even playing guitar at that time. So I saw one video. Uh, I think it was like re uh, ripping headaches or uh, ravenous medicine or something like that. And I I went to the store and. With my own money, I bought the Killing Technology album, and I became a fan right away. I, I didn't know what it was, you know. Yeah. It, it was so different than any other music that I've, and I didn't know even know it, they were from Quebec. They sounded like a foreign band. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, they, that's how they did. I, they sounded foreign. They sounded alien. Yeah, alien. Yeah, 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 yeah totally, yeah. totally. I, I think everybody who discovered the Voivod, well, when when they found Voivod. They sounded like, uh, as you say, foreign, because yeah. it, nobody can could relate to any one style or any one country. It was just, whoa! Where's where did, the where sound? did this come from? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it sounded foreign, yeah. foreigner, foreign from yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally alien, like yeah. you said. Yeah, and uh, and so I uh, uh, just I, I was wondering how to. To do that, and I, I, I thought their guitar looked really metal, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, what yeah. is that? And, and they, yeah, they just constructed everything, you know, from, yeah. from wood. And and uh, so I decided to buy a guitar and start a band. That, that was my main reason awesome. to pick up the guitar. And, and now I travel the world playing that band, and uh, I discover many different parts of the world, and I can stay for a few days for vacation and visit. And I, only in my wildest dream I would uh, you know I would have thought some someday I would travel the world and, and, yeah. and see the people and meet uh, different cultures and be a, a visible minority it was quite an experience as well yeah I, I hope everybody on the planet can experience that you know when you go to, to places like uh, Asia or uh, wh wherever the, your, your color yeah. is different yeah, and you're the only one. You're you're the you're, you're the, the ethnic minority. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a very uh, special feeling, and uh, it 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 it, it uh, kind of put you in a different perspective, and it's a it's a plus in your life to experience that for sure. Yeah. Now you understand a lot of things that you didn't understand. You just thought you understand it before. Mm. Right. So uh, it's very uh, rich. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, I can say it. Um, it. It brings me a lot. Yeah. To be able to travel and uh, oh, I'll, enriching. I'll, yeah, enriching mm. exactly, and to to be playing with my heroes and be pay tribute to Piggy every yeah. night. Mm. We play and 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 make a way and snake happy and. So we can continue the journey of Hoybad. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's it's, it's you're living the dream. the dream. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And I, I will. I, I, one thing I did want to ask you, um, 
was um, I, I remember meeting uh, I met Eric Forrest back in the day yeah, yeah. I met him a couple uh, times too. Yeah. yeah great 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 dude yeah, really nice sure. guy and I remember talking to him and, 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 and I was like I said to him look I, you know I like the stuff that, that, that you've done with the band and you know it's, it's really cool and everything I said but you know when it comes to like you know the, the original tunes I said that's that's where it's really at for me mm-hmm. and, 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 er- and, and Eric was just like dude I'm the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, look, yeah, I like playing the stuff that, that, that I've been a part of. He said, yeah, but but when it comes to playing those tunes, like you know, I was a fan of the band, so I I love playing that stuff. Yeah. How how is it for you? I I, I like the whole catalog, you know. So uh, there's there's albums that I, I like more than others. Yeah. Of course. But um, for me, uh, even uh, Phobos. Uh, is one of my favorite. You yeah. Know, uh, the sound is so chaotic and, and, and uh, it's it's a hard nut to crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's very different from what they had done before. It's a very psychedelic, thrash and, and, and chaotic sound, and I really liked it. I'm just saying, is the song? I'm trying to think. Is the uh, is the song forlorn on that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, forlorn is on the one before. Negatron. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought it was Negatron, one but. It, Ligatron is more, um, oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, more modern sounding, yeah, a little bit less chaotic. More, oh, yeah, 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 uh, kicks, you know, uh, yeah, real brutal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but it's more in common with ministry than, uh, yeah, exactly, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I like uh, Eric Farr's voice. Yeah, he, oh, he does a fucking great, great job. Yeah. yeah, very different, but new at the same time. And you know, it was Voivod because Piggy and Michelle and the team. For me, it's it's, it's not a different band. It's just yeah. a different version of the band, mm. but not a different band at all. Yeah. And of course, my three fave classic is uh, Killing Technology, Dimension, Hit Cross, and Nothing Face. Mm-hmm. And of for course. me, it's the evolution <laughs> of the prog side yes. of Voivod, you know, yeah. the intricate stuff. Yeah. And like you, the holy trinity of Voivod. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but for me, the album that gets, the album that doesn't get the the props that it's, that it's due is um, is The Outer Limits. I, I love Outer Limits too. It's, it's, uh, it's I, but I love fantastic. everything about it. Yeah. I love the production. The sound. The, yeah. yeah. And, and Jack Luminous. Oh, man. man. Yeah. What, uh, I want to meet that guy. Man. <laughs> you can. <laughs> oh, there awesome! Is. Pete is now showing us his uh, Jack Luminous tattoo. Um, tattoo. <laughs> awesome! Uh, yeah, man. And, and yeah, and I, I, I actually uh, at some point uh, I think I came up with the idea of playing it live, and we did it. Really? Yeah, we did it a uh, bunch of times actually oh, in 2012 awesome. or 13. We did it at Rome Burn. We we played the whole Dimension of Hatred album mm. and then Jack Luminous and people <laughs> like big guys with tattoo, you know, yeah. like in their 50s. Like, they were crying yeah. in the audience and man. I, I saw the videos from yeah. Rome Burn. It was amazing. Yeah, but amazing. they didn't they didn't record the Jack Luminous one. So someone had it on I see on um, yeah. on mobile phone. Oh, I didn't someone see had some it. of it. I've seen footage of this. Wow. But why wouldn't you record that? I mean, for goodness sake, you know. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great. Awesome. That's a very good musical journey to listen to. And mm. That was one of my favorite Voivod song. And, uh, uh, man, hey, to play that live, it was like man, like, like a dream come true for sure. I, yeah, I can imagine. And the can... whole Dimension Hatras album. Cosmic Drama was one of my favorite mm. songs too. And, that was a very obscure one, you know, in the catalog, and, and, and Snake didn't even remember that that song because they <laughs> right. they, they recorded fifteen albums for God's sake. You know? mm-hmm. So yeah. at some point you forget some stuff, but yeah, of course, yeah, it was great. But that's it, it's kind of um, that would that would that was kind of like the the MCA album, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> the, I think, yeah. It was kind of like yeah, it, I think. Would, would that have been so they would have toured that with that would have been the, the famous Soundgarden Faith No More Voivod that was nothing Face tour ah yeah, that would yeah, no yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah no, you're right yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was a different nothing era. Face tour and uh, I saw that tour I was 13 years old but uh, there was not uh, uh, Soundgarden were in there and uh, Faith No More couldn't make it to Montreal because they got famous on that tour yeah uh, and they got an Europe thing and uh, and uh, so I went there. I was 13 and Rocky, the new bass player, was there as well <laughs> because we're from the same town. Right. But we didn't know each other that at that time. But we we 
told each other the story and that was my first metal show ever and I, I didn't wow. I even have the age to be there you know my 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 parents got uh, drove me there because it was far from home wow. and I, uh, wow yeah so <laughs> it, yeah that's got it's kind of funny and uh, I was blown away man blown yeah. away that was the epic lineup classic lineup and, and the best uh, set list you you could hear you know classic all yeah. classic songs from the band and that was magic yeah because that was that was well yeah they were right in the middle of it then weren't they I think a lot of people have a similar experience the first time they see Voivod though it's just that it's so different from everything you've ever yeah. experienced before it's just it's still just some guys on the stage and you're watching them but what what happens? I mean, the only other band I've seen this happen with is Godflesh, where people are actually almost seem to be um, it's an emotionally moved, yeah, in, mm. in such a way that they come out feeling really weird. Mm -hmm. They don't, they can't quite understand what they've seen, but they know it was good. And that's, I think, that's the magic we're looking for when we go to see a show. Yeah, we we don't want to hear a record. We don't want to mm -hmm. hear. Uh, sequences with click track and, you do, yeah and you don't like want to that. hear the, basically they're playing the album on Pro Tools and the, exactly. only thing, and the only thing that's live is solos and drums and that you can never lose you know we, we lost uh, uh, in the music industry we lost uh, uh, the mediums like the CD the, the vinyls are okay there's a and we lost sales yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. that's what I mean yeah. but yeah. The, the shows you can never replace. Even though you have a cinema at your place and then you have holograms, yeah. Yeah. you don't have the people surrounding you, don't have the, the sound of the place. So you don't it have becomes, the smell. The smell is very important. Yeah. It yes. is a gig smell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did a gig on Monday night in, um, <coughs> in Swindon, <laughs> just to bring it back down yeah. to earth. I did a, yeah, I did a gig on Monday night in Swindon. And um, I walked in and it, I was doing a comedy gig, but it's a music venue. Yeah. And it's very rare that that combination okay. actually works. Um, and I walked in and I just walked in and it was like, yeah, this place smells of gig. <laughs> you know, yeah, it, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like old beer, old sweats, yeah. you know, it's lost, be lost property. You know, <laughs> it just, yeah, and it was. It was you know, in like, advance that. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It was weird because it, because it's a music gig as well. So I had I had wedges, monitors, and everything. And uh, yeah, I, so I just kept wanting to put my foot up instead. It's like no, no, no. It's comedy tonight. Changing, comedy. changing yeah, 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 persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's comedy tonight. Do comedy. Yeah. Be funny. Don't say. Um, oh yeah. So so that's the the experience. It, it, it's become more and more exotic to go to a show. Yeah, because mm. you can have music for free everywhere. You yeah. don't have to mm. pay, and you don't have to have the medium in your hand and see the lyrics and the, the drawings and the layout, and you don't have to do that anymore. So being yeah. seeing some humans, mm. you know, moving on stage and and, and performing became be, be, is becoming more and more uh, exotic and, and yeah. Yeah. special. Special. Well, yeah. What yeah. I've, I've noticed with a lot of people are. Uh, uh, I sound old, old man here. Like younger people <laughs> now, yeah, are so used to having all the entertainment on tap and everything's perfect and everything's quantized, everything's sequenced, everything's done so beautifully that if they have an opportunity to see a band live, they well, what they're just going to go on stage and play it. Well, they make mistakes, and are they treat that as a bad thing. They, they, they haven't got, you know, they don't almost don't, don't understand the interaction and what can happen when a band goes on stage and does things slightly differently. But it's almost like they think it's imperfect and they reject it. Uh, have you have you found that? I think uh, I think when it's happening, it's happening. Mm. You, you, if you try to intellectualize mm. an emotion. You, you're gonna get lost. Yeah. And I'm, thinking, I, I, I'm not talking about what, mm. what uh, you, but I, I'm talking about everybody in an audience. Mm. Uh, it, you know, everybody, every human is a sensible, emotional mm. being. So if something happens for a mass and you're a part of that mass, you're mm. gonna feel it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I'm, I'm just thinking of the people who uh, 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 criticism raised earlier was. Uh, bands just going on stage and playing, you know, you might as well just <coughs> on a laptop. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and bands are getting so perfect mm -hmm. to see live. Uh, people expect that now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
you know, they expect the perfection because everything they see is programmed and click tracked yeah. and yeah, and, and even and, the, and the they, vocals they, are, are yeah, pre recorded. And auto tuned yeah. and pre recorded. And, and people are maybe scared. I think it's a perfect. kind of a format. Formatting yeah. music is like formatting yeah. a burger. It's, you know? it's, well, it's, it's, yeah, it, but it's, it's creating fast a, food. It's creating a product. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, I mean, that's what that's. I've always said that within the music business, you've got two people. You've got two kinds of people. You've got people who refer to music as art, mm. and you've got people to refer to music mm. as products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and that's that's the difference, right? That's there. that's mm. pop music. Yeah. I mean, mm. pop music usually uh, there's really good pop music, so to speak, that are that are uh, um, easy for the masses, but really well done too. Yeah. But mm -hmm. pop music, in a sense, that. It's a product, and you have to sell the most you can while you know it's it's hot. Mm. Uh, it happens in metal since yeah. uh, since many years now, and it became a huge industry. Yeah, you know, so uh, there's a lot of products in metal as well. Uh, yeah, and, I'm uh, well, you know, definitely. When, when you know, every I can, I can think choreography, of choreography, yeah, yeah. Choreography, yeah. very good. Choreography yeah. <laughs> is is calculated because there's a you know uh, there's no no improvisation on stage anymore so well, it becomes very boring for the musicians and very yeah. boring for the crowd if they see the band twice in a year because it's going to be the same fucking yeah. s show well I um, I, I saw um, I saw um, I, I won't say which band because it will mean you can't comment on it so yeah, and it wouldn't be it's fair to, but it wouldn't yeah, be true. fair to put you in yeah. that position but I saw a band um, that my listeners know who I mean um, at, at, um, at Wembley Arena the end of last year mm -hmm. a friend of mine had a spare ticket I wasn't going to go and we went and we saw the head, I saw the main support and the headline band the headline band and it, Wembley Arena was sold out yeah um, sorry Wembley yeah Wembley Arena was sold out and um, the headline band came on and it was like the the, the, the the three guitarists two guitarists and bass player they were it, they were walking around sort of having the occasional sort of chat to each other yeah. and it, it was like they were walking around a mall you know what I mean they were just kind of like wandering around sort of like you know and you, I'd be one, like bored see one check in his phone between really? songs yeah between songs and God. yeah and the whole thing was just so it was it, it was just dull how was, was people really, reacting oh they were going nuts they really? loved it it worked yeah wow. but but it was but it it was a band it was it was it was a band I'm really dancing around it here it was one of those bands that you were talking about where the that pop aesthetic has has come into their music as a metal band and so it's basically their last album was this huge juggernaut of a marketing mission yeah you know it, it went to number one in the states and it was it was just really calculated mm -hmm. and when you saw the show the show the show reflected the overproduced yeah. overwritten album it was exactly the same it was just yeah. it was hollow there was no feeling um, and it, it was just yeah it, but to that to that sort of the, the main generation because I, I join you in sounding like an old man now um, to, to the, the kids who were there to see it, it was like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. they were there. At some the point, time. you're 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 bigger than your show. Mm. At some point, you get more popular than your actually performance. Yeah, you know, so you don't need to be good anymore because you have your mm -hmm. name and uh, whatever you do, there's going to be people showing up. Yeah, if it's that kind of huge band you're talking about, sometimes it happens. You know? Yeah, but yeah. you know you can't blame the people to like. Oh no, not at all. They're they're going there. Some of those will be their first gig they've ever been to, so mm. it'll blow them away anyway. Exactly. So the whole experience. experience. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but uh, when you come to art, uh, mm. then it's a different. Uh, Oh man, well, look, when it when it comes to art, my my favourite live band who I've seen more in the last five years than anyone was Rammstein. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That's I never just, saw them. Oh, I would be man. blown away to see them. It's like a travelling circus. Yeah. I mean, they just they just take wherever they are, they take it over. If you go yeah. to a venue and everyone normally plays that end, they play that end, mm -hmm. and over there, and there's a stage hanging from the roof, and oh yeah, it's just yeah. insane. Yeah. But the one thing when I go and see them that I always forget, I always remember the spectacle, and the the, event. the one thing I always forget is the minute they put, they go into the first song, is that the sound, sound is, is impeccable. Well, they're German, aren't they? So <laughs> <laughs> there's no room for error. Yeah. You know, it's 
perfect. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the loudest show you've ever seen, and it's the clearest no, show uh, you've ever seen. Sequences or anything? Do you um, think I'm, there's a lot of electronic. In I, I think there. I think there may be. Click tracks. I, yeah, and, I think there yeah. may be some some stuff in there. Yeah, I think there well, may be some well, stuff well, in there. When it's but, well but again, dosed and it, it sounds real. It works. But, but the thing is, with, with Ramstein as well, it, it is all about that. It's about that military mm-hmm. kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, regiment yeah. Yeah, that yeah, they have yeah. to their music. Yeah. So it, it fits kind with of, the kind of music. Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah, it I've fits. seen, I'm going to name some bands, but I don't care. Good. <laughs> I've, 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 I'm going to have another whiskey. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to take this in and you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, you know, everybody's doing whatever they want. But I've seen uh, two bands that I didn't expect to see anyway uh, in Quebec City uh, two years ago. And uh, I went, I had tickets. I went to see uh, Def Leppard and Lining, a big show. Right. But there was a band called Foreigner. You know Foreigner? Foreigner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Foreigner. Uh, opening. Yeah. And Foreigner were playing for real. And it was happening, man. They were really, really good. Back vocals were dead on. The, the, the singer was performing and uh, keeping the crowd alive. And really, really, really good band. And then the Flipper came on stage and it sounded perfect. It sounded like a record because it was the record yeah, playing, yeah. you know? And it sounded so such for me it, it was plastic music yeah, had no know? heart no yeah. heart at all i mean they can play it they, they're able you know they, they did it so they can play it again but the, the sequences were so loud that you could hear that it was pre-recorded for yeah. me as a musician i know yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah know? yeah and the, the guitars were doubled you know in the back vocals as well and even some of the lead vocal part were pre- pre-recorded wow. and i was like wow that that's and then the, the, the day after i went to see and the same festival Stevie Wonder mm-hmm. wow and man that's one of the best show I ever listen watch and see and experience in my whole life awesome it was perfect organic everybody was playing good you know yeah. uh, Anthony Jackson on bass or uh, I, uh, maybe not him but anyway very very good yeah. musician and rhythm section and brass and, and mm. it was real and and I'm, I'm sure there's a metal band that are still real like that, and they yeah. they sound huge even though they don't have the mm. the, the sequences. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm looking for when I go I, I go to see a show. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. No. And smaller smaller venue the better. Mm. Yeah, you it's know. different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, uh, festivals are a little bit. Uh, the crowd is far away from the stage. And, yeah, uh, but also you also with a festival you have you have the transient listener as well. Yeah, you have somebody yeah, who just yeah, walking true. past and, so, and 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 the audience is changing. Yeah. And, be, and and so it's almost like different audience for each song. Yeah, exactly. you have your hardcore. Fans yeah. in the front, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then and then it's just kind of like a but revolving that's, that's door. But that's a challenge for uh, for us or yeah. for any band mm. uh, because we played a few festival on, on this tour, man. And, and I really I realize that it, it's a challenge every time because you know there's a lot of people that don't know the band yet or they just heard about it, and it it, it gives a, an extra adrenaline to go get them, mm. yeah, and to convince them and to look at them in the eye and. And you know, thinking, see, see what we mean, you know, and, and mm. just be part of it, you know, yeah. and and that's that's a fun uh, challenge to yeah. to feel. But I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, sometimes we, we we open in Quebec City for uh, the same festival I was I was talking about with Stevie Wonder, uh, yeah. the youth festival. Festival we opened for uh, Avenge Sevenfold. Oh, yeah. oh right, okay. okay. And there was eighty thousand people. Yeah. But nobody cared about Voiva. <laughs> but we, we, at the end of the show, everybody was uh, lighting their uh, festival uh, light. Right. Okay. And, cool. And and you know we could see a, a sea of light going on at the end of our set, and it was fun. That's awesome. But 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 you know it's not the same kind of music, and it's not the same public, and a lot of people are there because they have bought the pass for the whole festival, and but. You know. Anyway, it's a, it, I think it's a good challenge. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it, it's, um, it's, it, it's 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 the, it's the same in comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, small small room, different challenge, bigger the audience, 
it, it's harder to keep it, it, it's harder to keep people focused yeah because there's so many distractions yes um, and and so you you've just got to you've just got to be on point for the whole length of time that you're on there uh, you have um, to be uh, uh, very uh, aware yeah yeah and just and just and just constantly keep it going and keep moving as well as a comic when you just, that's just one of you so it's just like you've got to keep yourself occupied because if, because if you if you stand still for too long enough people know where you are they so you speak to somebody and you're still there <laughs> you have so, to grab their attention yeah, all the time yeah right? so you just it's literally it's like it, it, it's 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 the same as trying to keep a, 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 a child interested in yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's, you've constantly got to be, be doing something. Basically, a, an audience is kind of a child. Yeah. They, they, they say, uh, they, I don't know who, but uh, that, that an audience is kind of a five-year-old five kid. Yeah, with a, with a shared consciousness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one big five-year-old child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah and, and not play any deaf lepers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's it. I yeah, didn't say it. That's it. You're off the guest list. <laughs> that's the deaf leopard tour out the window. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so what, what, are your, what are your plans next? Because you're, you're, you're going to be recording again soon, aren't you? Yeah, we just recorded a second new song. Right. And uh, it's mastered and mixed. It's going to be out uh, next fall or in a, a few months. And uh, we, uh, we're writing some new music uh, for other split seven inches, like we did with At The Gates. And uh, going towards a new album, I guess. Right. And uh, it's going very well in the studio and uh, the jam space, and the, the spirit is high and uh, awesome. You know, uh, is it different second time round writing new material? It's different, it uh, of course. A different lineup is always a difference, but uh, for me, but, uh, yeah. I mean, you personally being yeah, kind of like, is it? I, I'm even more involved. Right. Uh, I'm more motivated. Um, And uh, everybody's part of it, so uh, there's no. Uh, when I bring an idea, or uh, we structure me and Rocky, the new bass player, we structure some riff, we bring it to the jam space, and we jam it. And so, most of the time, away got this particular uh, habit, I guess, to, or it's part of his playing, you know. Uh, it's, 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 it's his im imagination. He's gonna play the beat that you don't expect on your riff you, you wrote. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. For, for yeah. me, it's clear that this riff is gonna be that way on the drums, but he always twists it, yeah. always, and that's why Voivod is Voivod too. Yeah. And 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 okay, so I'm gonna change the guitar part a little bit, and he's gonna change the bass part, uh, so it matched with the the, the kick and uh, yeah and. Uh, Slowly, it becomes a sculpture. Uh, 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 lots of people are working on the, the, the same piece piece of art. Uh, oh, collaborative. Co yeah, co collaboration. collaboration uh, yeah. Um, and and then when when this is solid, Snake, feel free to. Right. To start to improvise some line, yeah, and he's amazing at finding good melodies. Mm -hmm. He hears, he's, uh, he told me he hear, he listened a lot to the bass, and that's where he get most of his ideas ah, right. for uh, for uh, counterpoint or melodies, mm -hmm. and he hear the guitar for the pitch. Right. So uh, he tries some stuff. Uh, again and again, and it, 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 right away it becomes a Voivod song. So there is a use for a bass player then? <laughs> was that? There is a need for a bass player after all. Yeah. Uh, like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Pete, Pete, you're back in the band. Thank you, sir. Don't hit me again. <laughs> but, but though in Voivod it's more a progressive approach, like Yes or King Crimson, so where the bass is uh, sometimes playing the role of a bass but sometimes being a role of a second guitar or a baritone guitar, you know, yeah. and there's a lot of counterpoint, you know, uh, like uh, canon, yeah. you know, when uh, everything is, is not phased, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, 
it's, that makes the music more proggy and more uh, I don't know and, and there's a lot of, of that in Voivod music since the beginning and, uh, yeah we try to keep that color and and stay in that kind of a, of a prog thrash sound that made that, them that's what, what they are that attracted me to Voivod in, yeah. in the first first instance was Wow, the bass is doing something really interesting, just like Chris Squire. Huh? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So was, yeah. That's and funny because always retained that. Always. That's yeah. funny because you just you just referred to um, you just referred to Voivod as them. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. But it's but you know, but it's true. we were walking here and because Pete's only just been in, in the band a short time. Yeah. And and on the way on the way to meet up with you, he referred to Acid Rain as as, as them and us. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah we yeah. were like, yeah, it's like a members club. You know, it's been going a long time, and you, yeah. you've just joined. But the club's I, quite old, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sometimes I, I talk to Michelle and Snake, and I, I see you guys. I say you guys, <laughs> yeah. blah blah blah, and and sometimes they say no, no, us. <laughs> yeah, you know, they they're very inclusive since, since day one, you know. Yeah, and and but well, if you're in, you're in. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, uh, yeah. I feel more comfortable now. It's been seven years, you know, but. Why wow, has it really been that long? Yeah. Two, wow. Yeah, 2008. So is it six? No, 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 no. Seven, seven years. Seven, yeah. yeah. Wow. Already. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm more comfortable seeing I'm part of the band now. Yeah. And I, I compose a whole album with them, and then I compose some more. So. Yeah. I think. Uh, I. I I'm part of it now. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're sat here doing an interview as Voivod. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's it. You oh, are so Voivod. Much pressure now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So tell us some crazy stories from back in 85. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you what I heard. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, tell, you about, tell us about when you were climbing a tree. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doing your history five, homework. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the year uh, uh, back in the future. One uh, came out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh fuck yeah, Jesus. Um, well, and of course, I remember going back to the the, the the Holy Trinity as well. Going back to that Holy Trinity, yeah, yeah. because um, uh, Nothing Face was the first um, first digital album I ever owned because it was it, it was recorded um, digitally. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it was I remember on your CDs it used to it used to say like yeah, 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 yeah. A, A A A D yeah. or A A D or and it yeah it was the triple D and it was the triple sound D was so clear on this album the mix yeah. Glenn Robinson mixed it a friend yeah. of mine. Uh, I worked with him a bunch of times, and uh, this album you can hear every details. Yeah, every details, very clear. Because I just finished the Nothing Face tab book, and um, the bass was really easy to hear and to to write down. Right. I had a lot of trouble with Killing Technology. That was the worst. The worst for me to, and I don't even want to try the first two ones. It's very muddy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very muddy. It's hard oh, to to hear the bass. I had. Yeah, to but it's clear you. compared to the first two. Yeah. yeah the they play better and better, you know. After. Yeah. And uh, but uh, I had to use EQs and uh, panorama a lot mm. to find the, where the bass was, you know, it, and. Uh, when I lift the frequency, I, I I lift the frequency of the guitar and vocals at the same time, so it was very hard to, to do. But I I did it, and but the Nothing Face one was a joke to, to write down. It was yeah. so clear, and you, you can hear it. I, I had a conversation with a friend friend of mine who's a big Zappa fan. Yeah, and he uh, I was I was explaining how uh, you are doing the, these tab books with Voivod. And we came to the conclusion that you are the anti Steve Vai because he tabbed it and then got hired. You got hired, then you tabbed it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I tabbed you're, you're some before getting in the, in the band yeah. for myself, you know. But, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, yeah that, that, that makes that's, you the anti Vai. Yeah, I'm the anti Vai. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's another album title for you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, I'm the fucking comedian here. I'm sorry, okay, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Fuck me, he's my French side. 
Well, yeah, that was news to me. The French had a sense of humour. <laughs> <laughs> it's not strictly French. No, I know that. <laughs> I know we, that. we had this conversation yeah. at the Underworld about about Canadian French. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Pretty different. <laughs> yeah, no, I lived. I well, I lived. I, I had a flatmate who was. Um, uh, Canadian. It sounds, that's really weird. It sounds like you know I had a vlad mate who was um, Canadian. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay now. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and, and and he was a, he like explained it. He he tried to explain kind of Canada to me and oh, okay. he was explaining Fringlish. Yeah. Yeah, he was explaining. Yeah, like that's this. a different part, though. Uh, right. Canada, yeah. Right. More uh, the Maritimes, uh, so to speak. Uh, New Brunswick, uh, New uh, New Townland. Uh, hmm. uh, they they speak both languages at the same time. And yeah. It's very hard to understand. <laughs> it's very hard. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Please don't do a song in English. Oh, I don't even <laughs> know. I don't even know how to do it. But, uh, awesome. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, so when are you heading? Um, when are you heading back? Uh, the day after tomorrow. Hmm. Right. Okay. And so, what are your plans? Um, uh, more sightseeing un- until then. Yeah, more yeah, sightseeing. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know what to do. <laughs> We've been pretty much everywhere, so I don't know. Uh, tonight, uh, maybe I'll go out and have a few beers somewhere. Uh, maybe I catch a show. We went to Ronnie Scott Jazz Club. Oh, which right, is amazing. Yeah, it was an amazing. Uh, band there from Scotland and uh, I bought a CD they, they, they were really really good and uh, awesome. Jimmy Haslip who played bass with uh, Alan Holtz who was there as well And uh, but we missed it ah. and, uh, so maybe uh, I'll co- uh, we'll go back there tomorrow and, yeah uh, it sounds know. like you've just been a really well timed trip you've managed to like it's fun after a tour like this a uh, mini tour like two weeks to, to be able to relax before going home and uh, just, you know, uh, have a good sleep and uh, have a good time and incognito and uh, because you get, uh, you know, most of, I don't know if most of the artists or band or singers will say it, but of course every time you play on stage you feel special. You feel uh, like yeah. uh, you, you, you start to feel like a semi god or something, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's important to to get back to the basic after a tour. For me, it's important mm. to, when uh, I get back home, I I, beca- I become uh, the ordinary decompress. Yeah, and, and yeah. I go in the street and nobody care about me, and that's important. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, because every day you you uh, everybody loves you. There's there's a lot of love. Unconditional love yeah. of strangers. Yes, exactly. That's what we feel on stage. Yeah, that's and we need yeah. it. But oh, we yeah. need to remember that it's it's kind of a uh, ephemeral. It's not real. It's ephemeral. Not ephemeral. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's like a dope. It's like a drug. And a yeah. Well, also because they they see their version of you. Yes. They exactly. don't see you. Yes. Yeah. And you don't want to become the version they see. And, yeah. And that's uh, that's very important. Yeah. So it's good to be around here and just you know take it easy and uh, meet people and uh, see yeah. see friends as well. <laughs> cool. And, uh, cool. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, and, and I I, pres- I presume as well because you because you've had this time to sort of decompress. Yeah. So going home, you'll be kind of like coming off the plane and going like right. Okay. That was fun. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, yeah. Ready for I'm, more adventure. Rather than coming, ho- yeah. Rather than coming home and going like, oh fuck, I need to uh, sleep and I can't wait yeah. to get home. And it's depressing and when you come back home uh, for yeah. three days or so. Yeah, yeah. Your home uh, feels a little bit smaller, and then and, and then you wonder the next day, ah, where's the action? Where's the action? What, where are we gonna do? Is there a yes. show tonight? And yeah. you know, there's nothing. You're alone. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and it's okay, but it takes a few days to to come back to reality. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's I, I've talked to loads and loads of bands, and and it's a it's, you know it's a common thing. Yeah, um, yeah I think but, so. but 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 also not just coming back off tour, but coming off stage. Yes, you know, and 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 decompressing in the dressing room, yeah. and just because there's there's a danger that well, you know, we all we all know the industry's famous for it. There's a danger that you just want to keep that high you're on, yes, yes, and you yes. want to keep adding to that high with 
whatever is around. Yeah, of course. And, of and, course. And, and, you know, that it's, way it's lies not a madness. It's balanced life. If, yeah. if you don't take care, it's, it's easy to, to plunge into uh, something pretty dark and, uh, yeah. and not healthy. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, look, you know, once in a while, it's, you know, yeah, gonna, everyone's yeah. going to cut loose. Of yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course. But, yeah, you, you have, yeah, it's, it's, well, yeah, I mean, you know, We've all been there, so yeah, and I'm working in comedy. I mean, there's it, every every comedian I know is either a recovering alcoholic, yeah, or or doesn't drink because it's a choice they don't want to drink, or on their way to being an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, there's always uh, yeah. Notice I'm not drinking tonight. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, man. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's well, yeah, especially after that whiskey. Mm, yeah. It's serious, man. It's serious. It's good shit. I'll drive the tube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, have you done any of the? Have you managed to get out and see any of the um, uh, the uh, whiskey brewers up in Scotland? Have you played no, much in Scotland? I didn't. We didn't play yet in Scotland in seven years. Shit, really? Yeah, we played in Ireland once, and uh, we were supposed to go in Scotland, but it was cancelled or, or just uh, it didn't work, or I don't know. But uh, hopefully someday, because I, I, I like scotch. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it would be nice to play there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, and, and they're, um, they're great audiences. They're, yeah, yeah. We met uh, Scottish people in the festivals uh, many times. And, uh, oh, they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Red they're, beard. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are how they are um, uh, uh, portrayed in movies. Yeah. Uh, where was that? That's, that's, that's was me never Hamlet. going to Scotland. They want to set foot in Scotland. Ah. Oh. <laughs> remember yeah, what you said. It's, it's good to play everywhere. I mean, I love to be uh, destabilized. When we went to Japan and I heard the language and, and I fell in love with the language and. Uh, the musicality of it first, you know. Yeah, the rhythm and the, the timbre. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I really like uh, to to be uh, in a different environment and to be to be uh, destabilized by what I hear, what I see. And, yeah. Yes. To that extent where your voice sounds strange coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Because you hear everything and then you hear your voice come out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and it helps a lot to to travel to be aware that the world is small but it's big and you're nothing in it but you're something at the same time but you know it, it, it really really relatively relativize yeah no uh, yeah. relatively relatively yeah uh, uh, your position in the universe you know in the relevance earth, and your relevance, yeah. relevance. The, yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, it's, it feels good to be uh, yeah, I don't know no. uh, you know, uh, when you're always at the same place and you you didn't see anything and you it's not everybody that have the chance to travel for sure of course but yeah. uh, it opens your mind a lot to do it you know, to travel and to meet different cultures and uh, you don't see the word it transforms you from inside for yeah. sure that's what yeah. I wanted to say <laughs> I think it's, it's the art of Realizing that you're uncomfortable, but enjoying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. Just you know, m making it a positive rather than a negative. Yes. Feel out, out of your kind of zone. It it breaks some some uh, pre um, preconceptions. Yeah, 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 totally, and uh, and, and creates a new way of seeing things, mm -hmm. new perceptions. And you, you understand more. Yeah. yeah does, so. it, does it? Does it have any um, effect on your on your music? I think so. Yeah, uh, I don't know, you know, directly. Yeah, I think it's hard to quantify. Isn't yeah, it? it's hard to quantify. It's like uh, when uh, lots of people in interviews, uh, for example, ask, "What are your influences?" Uh, oh, don't worry. I'm not going to be asked bullshit questions like that. No, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's fair, you know, so what, you, what are you listening to? That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's fair What enough, are yeah. your influences, uh, influences uh, music-wise? I don't know, man, the sky, uh, <laughs> the sheep in, yeah. in the field. The breakfast uh, I had this morning. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's hard life. to, yeah, life, life yeah. in general. Everything influences you. Well, it's like we were talking when, when you were when you were saying earlier about um, about you know playing with the, the the Inuit people, yeah, and 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 stuff like that. Experiences like that, 
change your perception as well, don't they? Because you see, you see what music means to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's something completely different to how Western culture treats music. And yeah, it, it was strange because they're all Catholic now. They they lost their spirituality uh, because of the, the white European people. We're all right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so they, they was they were convert to Christianity and uh, the children were forced to go to school and cut their hair and they were they weren't allowed to speak their own language in school and they were ma- mistreated yeah. and then they come back to their parents the weekend that they shut up they don't want to make them feel sad about right. where they live okay, yeah. because there was only two days in the week that they could see them and uh, and they, they started to uh, be, uh, so to speak, uh, westernalized. Uh, is that, does yeah, that yeah. make sense? Western yeah, no, no, yeah. Look, it, it, it's a word that you have just made up. Okay, yes, westernalized. Nice, yeah, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And there's another album title. <laughs> yeah. But they were, they were west already yeah. before the, 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 the uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, westernalized Hatros. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, yeah. and, and Vi- yeah, Vivod. And yeah. then they had to, they had to uh, hold on Christianity and to, to make sense of all of this, right. I guess. And and um, uh, the music they like the most is uh, music like Johnny Cash. Oh right. Yes, because I think I don't know, but I think it's because it's close to the people, the text, the music. It's yeah. simple. It's close to the. You know the, the the ground. It's it's grounded music. Yeah. It's just a voice with a guitar, and he, he speaks about real things. Yeah. Very organic. Yeah, very yeah. organic and yeah. real life, and, and you know, oh, yeah, misery got, and pain. And I you gotta know. love, the, gotta love the cash, man. Yeah, yeah. gotta love the so, cash. And it makes sense that they like that. Yeah. But uh, and they they have still uh, throat singing and traditional uh, melodies and, 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 and chant that they yeah. they're able to sing there's in their own language. Uh, Tuvan Tuvan for it's a good Tuvan. There's a oh what's it called? Oh, it's um as as a school of throat singing. I think it's a t- Tuvan. I don't know. No, I don't. No. I'm a singer, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really a singer. <laughs> no, you're, you're in a fresh I just shout. You're in a fresh metal band. Yeah. You don't count. The, the shout one. in a fresh metal band. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I did shout as a fresh metal band, or I shout as a comedian. Mm. So that's it. That's all I can do. Shout, <laughs> shout, and shout, talk. <laughs> shout and talk. That's that. They're, they're my skills. Two talents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a bass player, and therefore don't count. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, well, certainly uh, can't count in. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Not. I see. Yeah, you're now referee. You're, 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 sat, you're sat between the two of us now. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want yeah. to be that position. <laughs> That's why right. yeah, you hear about the thrash metal vocalist who tried killing himself and threw himself behind a train. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. Cheers. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you, and you've just done your. So, you did the you did the tour of the states. Did you come? Did, did you come straight here from? No, we had a. I didn't study your itinerary. No, as you can we, tell. we 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 uh, we ended up early March. Uh, yeah, so in the States it was a five weeks, five right. week tour, 31 shows in 33 days was amazing. Uh, Packed venues and a very uh, energetic, energetic crowds. And, well, it uh, would be, yeah. Yeah, it was really Playing really with cool. Napalm, I mean, that's yeah. just like, oh. And, uh, and then uh, we, we did record this new song and we, uh, we came here after. And, uh, and, cool. Uh, so how is it, are, uh, are you... Are you actually go- are you actually going to put a a period of time aside to write an album, or are you going to do are you going to do it kind of one song <laughs> well, here and there, depending if tours come up, and yeah, you well, get offers, and all of a sudden you'll have an album. We all over a have of time. Uh, other stuff going on in our lives. It's not like we're a young band and uh, you know only tour for ten months a year, and uh, and we we enjoy doing other stuffs as well. 
Yeah, so it's allowed. It's allowed. It's, it's, it's allowed yes. now, isn't like, it? Away is drawing a lot of stuff for uh, you know, uh, like uh, album layout and uh, books and covers and a T-shirt for festival. Uh, so he's, he's doing a lot Next of Next acid rain album. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sort that out for me. Ah, <laughs> so um, he's doing a lot of that stuff, yeah. and uh, we all. Uh, Rocky's a freelance. Uh, bass player as well in Montreal right. playing with pop artists and I do that as well and I teach guitar jazz and pop guitar in uh, in college for a living as well so I'm keeping busy when I'm when I'm home but we we keep some time to of course we we, we take some time to write music and to yeah. get together and jam yeah. but we have to schedule in advance and you know organize it so it work and it yeah. it it, uh, it, it uh, how do you say uh, keeps uh, regular yeah and it moves forward oh man look we're, we're the same I mean we've got uh, we've got a, a drummer in Newcastle so that's like 250 miles away yeah and then we've got a guitarist in Devon so that's another like 200 miles that that's way that's when internet and then somebody from Wales and then and then there's us two in London yeah so it's, it's hard just, huh? yeah so yeah. you've got to schedule it so everybody is you know in the, in the same place at one time everybody do your own work and then when we get together everything is yeah is, is yeah, exactly. yeah you hit the ground running yes and that's the thing with uh, the advantage with with internet and we can send files to each other and work on part of the song but even then you have to meet and play you know, oh yeah because that's where it happens that where the, that's where the magic happens for sure oh yeah and it's, it's all about the magic yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, I well, I we we the last rehearsal we did was the first time that um, that I'd played these songs with a with a five piece yeah. for 25 years. Wow! I know, and so it was it was. It how was did a, how did it feel? It was. It was uh, I, I'm I'm an atheist, but it was a spiritual oh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was it was weird because it was like it was like um, oh, like really clear déjà vu. You know, really? yeah, yeah. So it's like really, really clear. Um, it felt like I'd done it before, but I hadn't. You know, because oh. it, it, yeah, it was really, really odd, really, really odd feeling. Twenty-five um, years later. Twenty-five years later, playing those songs that you know we we wrote as teenagers. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. You know, and then playing them with with four different guys as well. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which is, yeah. And, and then. But the song's the same, but the people are different. And this, what about and the piece. meaning, the, the lyrics? Does it suit? Um, the lyrics. Um, I, when I was, um, I, I used to, I used to write. Um, I've always written from a very personal perspective, mm -hmm. but I used to write. I used to write about issues as well. Um, so some of the songs are more personal than others. Some of the songs were about stuff that was going on in my life at the time. Yeah. So, um, well, so when that's, you sing some of the stuff, do you? Uh, relate to it still yeah 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 and and good. to be all of the songs bring back memories yeah because yeah. it's like you know you do, all of a sudden there's just different memories going off it's like like when you watch a film and you see like you know there's a montage time yeah yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah montage of all different times oh. and eras and things going on and it's like yeah it's like an episode of the a-team uh -huh. you know <laughs> going on in there <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those different it's like playing here or playing there or yeah. like you know d d d being in the studio and very special yeah, it's, huh? yeah it's, oh it's amazing amazing i'm just it's a time I'm, travel yeah that's what wow it is. yeah it is isn't it yeah wow yeah so i'm, I'm looking forward to doing some time traveling <laughs> um uh, this year free yeah. time travel yeah, yeah ab so absolutely fun. absolutely no it's gonna be great fun that's a good build, man. Mm. <laughs> yeah too right yeah, yeah very good um um uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's good yeah Good for now, man. Sure. Oh yeah. Just, uh, just taking the pedal off the accelerator oh, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. It's good though. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's bizarre. I can fucking still smell. I can still oh, smell yeah. that. It's, it's very thick, you know. You can see it. Yeah. Drop. It's, it's awesome, isn't it? It's absolutely <laughs> insane. It's lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, are you are you a big a big whiskey drinker or more of a connoisseur? Be, I used to be a connoisseur, not really amateur. Amata, right. Yeah. More than connoisseur, but uh, I've tasted a lot of uh, whiskey. We used to uh, do uh, parties where we brought a bottle or two each, 
15 people and taste everything, you know. Wow. And now I know a little bit more about scotch, but in, uh, in uh, Canada, in Quebec, it's hard to find uh, the good stuff. And, uh, really? And we don't have everything. Uh, there's only a small selection of what we can have. And it's all the mainstream, well-known yeah. brands and stuff like that. Yeah, we, we can have uh, Lefrog, Talisker, uh, uh, Glen Morangy, Glen Fiddick, of course, uh, uh, Beaumont, uh, Highland Park, uh, La Gavoulin, uh, lots, oh, lots of them, but... Uh, and then you can, and then you can just go across the border into the states and you can get a, and the, a different li- liter ones. gallon bottles, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big plastic bottles with the old sculpted handle and uh, <laughs> that blew me away the first time I went yeah. to the states. And there's like these fucking bottles of vodka like this with a like Huge, plastic yeah. handle. It's like who needs that much vodka? Yeah, pretty, everything is huge in America. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I had um, I had an American girlfriend. Um, uh, for a, a year or so and I'd go over there and she'd come over here and um, the first time she came over and she just I, she came, to my, I came to my place and um, we were in the kitchen and uh, I said like do you want a coffee or something and I made her a coffee and I opened the uh, opened the fridge and she was just like oh no, no oh isn't that so cute I was like what she was like your fridge it's so cute isn't it it's so small I was like no, it's fucking fridge size <laughs> This is a fridge. This is what. And then I went to her place, and I was like, "Jesus Christ!" It's like opening a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, what the hell? It's like, a, it's like Doctor Who's TARDIS in there, wow. you know? It's just like, right, okay, now I know what you meant. Yeah, everything <laughs> is fucking huge over there. Yeah. yeah. Do you do much touring in the states? We uh, we just did that one, and yeah. uh, uh, before that we did a few festivals. The Austin uh, Housecore Festival with right. Phil Anselmo, and oh right, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he invited us there. And it was really cool. So did you um did you meet the guys from Metal Sucks? Were they at the? Because um, they I know the guys at Metal Sucks do a podcast. Chuck and Godless do a oh, maybe, do a, do a podcast. Um, maybe not me, I don't, but maybe another, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that. I don't think had they had you guys on. So obviously this is an exclusive. I've got one up on them. You see, having you go, having you on here. What's that? I've got. I've, I'm one up on them having you on ah, here. You see. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Hope you're listening, guys. Uh, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, it's um. It, but as you were saying, it, it, it's good to um to have other other things going on. Oh yeah, for, for sure. For, for, I for everybody. Yeah, I, I mean, playing metal is great. It's, it's a good energy. It's a good vibe, and and, and the, the crowd is always, you know, got a, a nice energy. Very crazy. But playing uh, in a small club, uh, some jazzy pop, or or uh, with a with a pop band playing some, you know, uh, Stevie Wonder or whatever, yeah. Michael Jackson. Or, you know, and improvise on those songs and playing with different musicians, different kind of music. That's what I do yeah. uh, since a long time. But I come from metal. Yeah. I played with Gorgots, Crypt Up C, my own Ben Martyr yeah. back in the day. And yeah, you've done, but you've, 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 you've had, there's a lot of metal with you playing on it. Yeah, that isn't I think so. In Voivod yeah. and DBC for one show. Was a You're wow. fucking yeah. joking no, me. Yeah, played you DBC. played with DBC. Yeah, I did. Dead brain cells, yeah. man. Yes, Honestly, yes. Wow. For, for those of you I listeners really who don't like know, it. check out DBC from the old yes. school. I re- I, well, I, uh, I'm a fan. Man. Do you know what? My my best friend, my best friend, wrote to to, to DBC. Wrote yeah. wrote them at, like back in the day. Yeah. You know, wrote them a, a letter on paper. You know, <laughs> bought stamps and posted it. Yeah, he wrote he wrote them a letter. He was like, I was thinking it was, um, it was the second album. Yeah, Universe. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the second album because that was a concept album, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I really and, like this one. Yeah, yeah, because there's it, there's just like total essence of Voivod. Yeah, I totally. In, 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 totally. in that, and it was just like, wow, yeah, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, he, really he wrote a letter to them. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. One show. Yeah, one show was in two thousand and one. Right. And, uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, on the New Year's Eve and uh, all the original guys and, and me because the guitar player passed away uh, oh, as well no. in, in the 90s so uh, yeah like 
maybe 10 songs, I don't, I don't remember. So you'll, you'll be coming the guy where, you know, the g guitar player passes away in a band and it's like, uh, I hope you know, not, ring, uh, let, let, let's ring Chewy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I've been called for many, uh, <laughs> many, many gigs, like, like, because Martyr was a very, uh, very well known in Quebec and in Canada and we, we did lots of shows and I started that band when I was 14 years old. And we put up that kind of the music, very complex music, very dense, uh, solos are over the place and uh, very hard to play. And I was playing and singing and being in the front man. Right. And I, I think I don't e I'm not even able to do that anymore because it was the, the, the hardest music I ever played was the one I wrote. Yeah. And, and uh, that band was very, very complex musically. Yeah. And uh, so we were a reference for other bands if they needed replacement we were right. the first call in, in, because in you guys because obviously all play yeah yeah mm. and so my brother ended up playing with cataclysm for a tour uh, our drummer is now in gorgots uh, our ex-drummer martyrs over it now and uh, we we got those called here and there and, uh, do a tour and come back and do some more and more. But, that, but that's really cool because that because you know you, you like you said you put it together as a tra as a kid basically and, yeah, and, and yeah, then yeah. and the band grew and it and it and it gave everybody an avenue to yeah. to go on and musically achieve yes. whatever they wanted to in their lives. We, we didn't make it big or, or even international. I mean, when I toured Europe, some people are bringing uh, albums to sign and uh, I'm, I'm already surprised even in Japan I was like uh, in 2008 some people had the uh, martyr albums and I was like wow yeah. you know and, but but still it became kind of a cult thing without being very uh, very big at all <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I always appreciate the uh, friends around the world that one or two at some point that came up with the yeah, but that, it, it's, yeah, like, it's like it's like it's uh, like Marta became kind of like a feeder club, you know, mm -hmm. like 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 a sporting term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you have the like, the smaller club, yes, they give the players yeah, so to very the bigger small clubs. Small yeah. club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, so we, I think we had an impact on the local scene in Montreal. Uh, I, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure about that in Quebec and and. Uh, and now a guy for, like uh, Matt Heffy is a big fan of Martyr. A guy from oh really? Trivia. Yeah, yeah. I, I Matt an Heffy, album fan with, of the show, uh, follows us on Twitter. Matt. What's that? <laughs> Matt Heffy, he's a fan of the show, follows us on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, hi Matt, <laughs> it's been a while. We recorded an album together called uh, Cafarnaum, Cafarnaum with oh, Jason really? Sukov in uh, 2003, way before it was well known. And uh, he's a he was a fan of Martyr uh, then and he, he told me that he always keep a tab book of Martyr on the road so he can practice. Wow, wow. that's and, awesome. Yeah, and uh, the guy... Uh, Davidson from um, uh, 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 I can I forget what's the band American band American band give us some clues I'm by the way this but by the way my podcasts are usually much longer than they should be yeah. because I regularly forget what, what, uh, 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 a name or smoked, <laughs> smoked a lot of weed over the years and this thing just stops working sometimes yeah. and I literally sit there going oh come on guys come on tell me tell me and it's like yeah I, I can't remember <laughs> right so American band yeah uh, you got to narrow it down from there man <laughs> what's the, what's the, I have it I have it uh, anyway uh, we, we get pretty famous now and uh, he, he's he got the same guitar that I had back in the day the Jackson Warrior you know, oh right yeah he, he, he's often uh, talking about his influences uh, influences and, and talking about Martin and, and myself oh, as wow. guitar player and, yeah you know so we had a, an impact for sure for some people and and that's why uh, like I said we could play uh, pretty good our instrument and we had uh, some calls from other bands to replace and, uh, but you, this is it you, know, you never know who you're you're influencing you know you just play yeah, the music no, and you, you do know. it and that's it you, I mean, you, you, you know, know 
sometimes 20 years later you know? I, I had the same experience I, I interviewed um, I interviewed a band recently and um, I interviewed one of the members and one of the other members came down and um, and he introduced me and I was like hi and he was like hi H and I was like hi and um, he said oh can I get you a drink and he went to the bar and uh, the other member said oh yeah he um, he wanted to he wanted to he asked me if it was okay if he could come down and meet you <laughs> so, what do you mean it's like oh he's a big fan really what? and it's just like you know when it's unreal sometimes, yeah, right? absolutely, yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely I, I I mean I'm smiling about it now I yeah. mean you know it made me it just made me chuckle it's great. it really did it's it's great. Great. Yeah. What, I said, what I said to you the other week about you don't realise because you're too close yeah yeah, yeah. you're that close to it you don't see in front of your eyes and if you step back you get the big picture yeah you know? yeah because when we announced that we were we were coming back I was saying to these guys oh I'm, I can't believe how like how much coverage it's getting yeah, and all yeah, the rest yeah, of yeah. it and 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 Pete was saying well it's because you're too close to it yeah yeah you know so I like he said you know, you know I thought it would be you know, big news but you know when you when you really and yeah it's just it's been it had an impact and, and it's important to and you, uh, to uh, to uh, un, uh, underline it uh, so to speak and, yeah and people are they did, didn't forget about it yeah people yeah remember yeah. and when you and when you're in the in, when you're on the inside looking out it looks completely different yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure yeah I understand yeah 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 but um you, you can't know, really, unless you go on on PayPal and you see your albums sold for five hundred, mm. you know, yes. pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now exactly. You can, yeah. Oh, maybe we should reform. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, de it, de it definitely, definitely not the money. De de definitely no, not but the it's money. A, it's a, <laughs> uh, uh, it's money. Yeah, but there might Where? be. There might be one day. <laughs> it's an, uh, it, it's a hint. Mm, yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah. Some people still like that. Uh, they remember. They, they 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 thought it was good. They thought yeah. it had an impact. And uh, you know. Well, it's it's also it's about I I I'm, I'm a big believer in it. It's it's um uh, some uh, I, I saw some comments on YouTube on one of our videos something like that, and it's like um comments like first live band I ever saw, first album I ever bought, stuff like that yeah. just blows me away. Yeah. Because that is that's. That's you know gold disc whatever you not they exist anymore but none of that matters that's the the real stuff yeah and, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It, it, when you when you when you you know when you when you you're that band because I know the first live band I saw and I know the first album I bought mm -hmm. and I know the effect that that had on me yes. musically yes. and affected the rest of my life yes you know and and to know that you're that band for that person. It's just yeah. It's pretty amazing. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, there's there's definitely something about uh, um, reaching people at an age when when they're when they're kids when they're just discovering music. You you will always be that band to them. Yeah. You, you know, it, it, and that's that's the power. It's that, connection. Yes, that's the one. Do you, do you see me? Yeah. We are connected. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are connected. <laughs> hey, do you know what? That seems like the perfect place to. Uh, that seems like the perfect place to leave it. Actually, yeah, That's absolutely. We perfect. are connected. Yeah, we, yeah. We can put this away. We can start slagging off all the bands yeah, now. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you who I went to see at Wembley. <laughs> You've already mentioned them. Um, so uh, anyway, look. Thank you so much for for coming on the show. It was awesome to meet you and. Um, I will Great get you a copy of the um, yeah the uh, the Apple Core archives as well. Great, Sorry about Great. That. and thanks, Pete, for sorting it out as yeah. well. Yeah, that's no awesome. Worries. Thanks Cheers, a lot, man. guys. Cool, it was really thanks. fun. Cool, <laughs> yeah. And um, there you go. That was um, an interview with Chewy Mongrain, Dan Chewy Mongrain. Um, uh, what a lovely guy! What um, uh, and what a, I mean that's a, I think that's a great way to to end the podcast. Um, after all these hours now, I can't believe how long this one's working out. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, I hope it's not too long for you guys. Please, if they if they are too long, do tell me, and I won't do anything about it. Hey, hey! um, 
Um, uh, yeah, anyway, it, it's kind of like when they're this long, I like to think that you're sort of basically it's if, if it's I mean, you know, it's kind of like almost a, a weekly podcast. You could, you know, you can play it. Um, uh, just dip in and out over the course of the month, you know, listen to the first, listen to the first interview with Michael and then, and then uh, dip out again and then have to listen to me whinging about stuff and then listen to the desolated thing and then, and then dip out again and you just keep coming back to it. I mean, I hope however you listen, um, I hope the podcast is, is doing whatever you want it for you. Um, but anyway, just go back to the interview there. Um, that was, yeah, it was really cool. What a lovely guy, literally living the dream. Um, he's totally totally aware of that and into that and enjoying it um loving his time in the band and uh, and and i'm you know very pleased for him um just a very very open we had a really really nice chat um before the whole thing even started actually um in in the other pub we were in so um i was um it, it's always the case is when i whenever i do these interviews sometimes if you are meeting up with somebody in a social environment you don't want to. It's almost like you don't want to talk to them too much. You want to get, before you switch the tape on because you don't. You don't want to lose anything. You don't want to miss anything. Um, and we had a really, really nice, cool chat before that. But it, and, and but it was yeah, it worked out brilliantly. Um, and um, and we had, yeah, we had a, we had a really good laugh as you can hear. Um, and um, I hope that was um, I hope that was that was cool. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the whole podcast. Um, it's been a pleasure having you all um, uh, along as always. Um, thank you very much. It's it's I'm I'm constantly amazed and blown away by the amount of you that um, uh, that listen to this. I'm finding out more and more about people that you know that you never know who's out there listening. I guess that's what I'm I'm, I'm the point I'm trying to make. You never know who's out there listening and. Um, the adventure continues. Um, who would have thought that you know, all this length, uh, you know, after doing that first one, that we'd um, that we'd get this far, that it'd still be here. Well, I'm, you know, I'm still enjoying it. I'm still um, enjoying bringing you these, um, uh, and I've got some great ones planned. Got some real left field stuff coming at you. Completely not metal or thrash, but a band that are significant in metal circles, but aren't metal or thrash and um you'll you'll know who they are you'll you'll know who they are you'll have all have heard of them uh it's not faith no more don't get excited um, um but um yeah i and i've got some really cool stuff going i've got some fucking hardcore legends planned um uh yeah just some some really really cool stuff and also a, a genuine thrash legend who i'm i'm just negotiating with at the moment with his representative and I'm really hoping I can get him on in the next couple of months. So there's great stuff to come. Um, there's been great stuff on this on this episode. I hope. I hope I didn't get a bit too fucking uh, preachy on you and all the rest of it. I I, I do care passionately about um, about CCTV and, and 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 what a fucking blight it is on our society. It doesn't f it doesn't prevent crime. It just films it. Um, and and I yeah it is something I really do feel passionately about and because wherever you're listening to to this in the world as a country we are we love it we we are CCTV cunts in this country we love it we oh we can't stop filming it and and I I'm just to my eternal shame um, it, it, I I really that's one thing I you know I, I'm I'm I am reasonably patriotic but I fucking hate about this country is the amount of cctv but also the fact that as a nation we just seem to think it's a good idea we really do um but anyway look i like yeah i i did go off on it i am well aware of that but the other side of that is um fuck it it's my podcast i'll do what i fucking like um as always you know it's it's, it's not planned it's just it, it, it just comes from the heart i just make notes during the month and then i just spew utter bollocks at you um, for, for in this case, three and a half hours. I cannot believe you've made it this far. Um, well, you have, and thank you very much. And, um, and finally, let's play some tunes. Let's have some music on this podcast, because that's what it is all about. Um, these guys jumped straight to the front of the queue as far as, um, getting played on the podcast, because they're from Yorkshire, and their email started with, now then, um, which um, which is exactly how I start my gigs as Keith Platt, keithplatt.co.uk, check out my stand-up. Um, and um, they're a band called Nexus One. They are from Whitby in North Yorkshire. They are sound lads. They really are. Um, 
and uh, yeah, they 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 sent me an email um, and said like you know oh here's so obviously they did the right thing, which was tell me how cool the podcast is. That was the that was their first uh, bit of genius. That made sense. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then they uh, they sent me some tunes, and um, I, I I'm impressed. There there is um, there's definitely something there. They are worth checking out. They really are. Um, you can get them at ReverbNation.com forward slash Nexus One. So the name of the band is Nexus One. I am I am aware of uh, after my horrendous um, uh, time with Thirteen last year. X X Y O just fucking uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that'll make it. If you haven't heard the back catalogue, then go back and listen to all the other. Uh, po- um, uh, uh, talking bollocks, and you will hear me making an absolute fucking knob of myself due to um, my fear of Roman numerals. Anyway, Nexus One, you can hear them at reverbnation.com forward slash Nexus One. You can stream their music there if you're a cunt, um, or you can actually buy it um, as well. So, uh, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I fucking really hope there's no uh, boys and girls listening to this, but um, men, women, metalers of all ages, of all sizes, of all sexes, all creeds, all colours, all sexualities, you are all welcome in the world of talking bollocks. And um, this is, uh, this, well, this is the, the track I've chosen to play um, by Nexus One. Um, I, again, what can I say? Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks to you all tuning in. You see, I'm just going to fucking say it from now on. That's it. It that that's it. I've given up. Um, but thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time for to listen to this. I I can't thank you all enough. It really is great. Um, keep an ear out for Acid Rain. We are we are going to be uh, we're going to be everywhere. We're going to be all over the place. New tune coming very soon. Um, and, and what can I say? Just thanks, thanks, thanks. Really do appreciate it. Wherever you're listening to this, um, I hope it makes the time pass quicker um, and you're enjoying it. So thanks a lot once again. Thank you. Um, and without further ado, this is Nexus One and Fifty. And and the, one of the reasons I'm playing this song is because uh, because of the lyrics because of where it's coming from i i completely agree with it it's uh so it's a topic close to my heart one that i've actually written lyrics on myself which will be coming to a song near you at some point in the uh, in the distant future but anyway this is uh nexus one and 15 minutes of shame <laughs>
Right, that's it. Fuck off. That's the end of it. That's that's all we've got. That's all. We've got. That, that that is it. That is fucking it. How fucking long do you want this to be? It's over three and a half hours now. Do you go and do something. Stop listening. Go and get a life. Go out and do something. I'll I'll put the writers feature out for you in a few weeks. Jesus, for for God's sake, go out and do something. Until next time. Fuck you, cunts. <laughs>